Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Today's guest, none other than old school, proper gent of a carp angler and a very funny man indeed. Star of Advanced Carp Fishing's Weekender Series. Those of you younger audiences might not remember what that is, but I certainly grew up on it. Top all-round carper and a great bloke, Steve Renyard. Before Steve... I've got Henry Lennon in for some Nash news. Henry, how are you, mate? I'm very good. How are you? I'm living the dream, aren't I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> it's you are. sunny. There's some fishing on the horizon, mate. Life is good. Where are you fishing? Well, you know where I'm fishing, mate. But oh, there. we can't say, no. can we? Let's <laughs> shh that one up. Yeah. Um, I know you like a bit of uh, talking point-based stuff, mate. So I'm going to hit you with dropping leads. There was a little debate I saw on the old Facebook Earlier this week, about people's opinions on dropping leads, where do you stand? Um, it's uh, it is a difficult one because I don't know the science behind what's going to happen to water quality, but I'm sure. I think of places like those busy day ticket waters that have had, got thousands and thousands of leads dropped in there. Like, surely, it can't be good. It can't be good in the long run. That so there is definitely that size to it, but also. You've got to look at like the short term, long run. So obviously that effect, I think, could be a very long time that it actually takes effect. But in the short run, do you want to potentially snag up and tether a carp because you've not dropped a, a lead or something, and you've sn- you've snapped off? It's got a load of weed. For me, it's a, yeah, it's a difficult one. I I don't drop leads all the time. I don't think that you need to. Like if I'm fishing somewhere where I know there's there's no snags, there's no need. To, like it's not going to get in a big ball of weed where dropping leads like really necessary to land the fish Mm. i don't really i I won't drop the lead but if i need to drop the lead to to feel like i land land the fish then yeah i will drop the lead and i just i just don't think there's any other way around it like if you really care about the the environment that much and (laughs) they just don't go fishing really like that's how i see it don't listen to henry go fishing like i think that's that's the like there is obviously a downside to dropping leads, but there's also a massive positive to it, and you just got to sort of look at it like that. I think that's that's how I how I look at it. I, yeah. So basically, for you, the defining factor is fish safety. If you're fishing mm, a spot whereby yeah. you you're essentially gonna get a take, and there is a high probability of your lead being clogged up in weed, and you need that to discharge in order to get the fish in. Otherwise, you're potentially leaving it tethered. Yeah, exactly, hundred percent. So you got to look at look at from that side of thing, yeah. So from the environmental factor on that one, 100% drop the lead. But then the long run environmental factor of potentially going to poison the water, you'd say don't drop lead. So I think you just got to make a judgment on it. I th- mm. I do- there's, a, there's a difference. I've, I've seen various publications talk about lead and the fact that sometimes the substrate can sort of nullify and absorb them. And then people don't really know long term what will happen to uncoated leads or leads with different types of coating. Mm. So there isn't any sort of definitive studies, but there's different schools of thought on it. But essentially, there's a line that everybody has to draw there. And there's, there was people talking in this very debate about if you were fishing a venue and you had, let's say, a spot that is a spot, a spot which is a hole in the weed, you know full well that you're going to get a take, you want the fish to come to the surface, you want rid of that lead, and you want to get it through. Or you had a spot that was... 30 yards to the right that was completely clear around it in your head as an angler would you fish the spot where you know you're going to drop leads or the spot where you might not necessarily be on the fish but you know that you could fish that safely I'd, and keep the lead I'd, I'd fish the hole in the weed where I'd definitely get a bite yeah. because then damn fishing like I'm going out to catch fish so what about zigs um, I well, I fish zigs at Royston a lot and I try and drop the lead all the time there because of the snags in there. Um, again, because I need to. Yeah. It depends how long the zig is. If it's if I'm fishing like a 15 foot thick zig, then I'm not gonna. I'm probably gonna want to drop la- drop the lead to land the fish. But if I'm sort of fishing like a six footer and it's completely clear, then no, I won't. I won't. You'll keep. You'll keep yeah, it yeah, yeah, I'll keep it on. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Is it's a judgment it, call. I think each time, and you got to sort of take it into it. Like I said, there's. There's a lot of short-term benefit in dropping there. There's a lot of long-term, I feel, like no matter what those scientific papers are saying and the different schools of thought, I do think that having a lot of lead 
And it, I think it will take a lot of lead to make a difference. But mm. I do think there's some waters out there that do have a lot of lead in there, like the linears and the. Mate, on this very like discussion, that. mate, there was an angler who came. Fair play to them, fully admitted it. But like, he dropped forty-two leads in a session. That's what I mean. Like that's 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 fifty quid, mm, isn't it? More. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's just, like that's got to make a difference at some point. I know once the plastic dissolved and once it's had an effect, I feel like it's got to make a difference to water quality and. That, that's that's just how I see it. So I I think that if you can get away with not dropping it, don't drop it for the environmental long run factors and also the cost. Like they are quite expensive leads, but um, but sometimes you need to. Like, yeah. And so you just got to do it. Like we don't live in a perfect world where everything's going to work out perfectly. So and for just, you, if you have to drop the lead, if you're fishing that type of spot where it's snaggy or whatever, what what is your preferred way of doing it? Uh, leg clip normally. Yeah. I just think it goes straight away then doesn't it like you can just nick it on the hook they shake their head and that's it it's gone straight up playing them in nice man losing to a hook pull later on in the fight <laughs> <laughs> yeah no let's not talk about losing fish in fights mate I'm still sore um, yeah so in terms of you we said fish care we said losing leads any incidents whereby you've adjusted that within the session or you've sort of you've changed with regards to losing leads. I've been in a couple of situations that I can think of fishing solid PVA bags where I've been fishing drop yeah. off in lines. And I've then purely because I've run out of leads and I know full well that I've got maybe another take left. I've, I've, I've fished it all the way through and I've found that they were coming through. Like some of them were coming through without any problems. I know, um, who was it? I think it was on this podcast. Kev Hewitt said that he fishes it fixed, doesn't he? Because he, he likes the fact that you've got the, the weight of the weed around the lead away from the hook hold or something. Yeah. That's what you're saying, yeah. wasn't it? Which I thought was a good point. Um, I can't think of too many where I've gone from dropping it to not dropping it yeah. and resulting more fish. I can think of loads of times when I've been thought, thinking, like, oh, I'll be all right here. like, And then I've lost a fish and gone, no, I need to drop the lead and gone the other way on it. I can't really think of too many uh, the other way around. No, sadly, I don't have an example like that. But yeah. I, I do I do get the solid bag point. Um, like af- after Kev Hewitt said it really did make me think but I just know of instances where um, I was fishing a club lake not too far from here a couple of years ago and I was fishing sort of like 80 yards over a, quite a bit of weed solid bags and I lost like two on the bounce and I just t- turned straight over from then into drop off. to drop offs and then I didn't lose any after that so that's so I know that some people say that but from my personal experience I've found there's a lot a of variables in it. As exactly, well, there's so many variables. Like to what consider. type of weed mm. it is, like for instance, there's a lot of yeah, or even just the way the carp's been hooked. Like it could have yeah. just come at a different angle. You don't know what the hook hold is. Like that's that's the thing with carp fishing, isn't it? There's so many variables to yeah. take into account that you never know what the hundred percent, what the actual definitive factor was for for so many things. So it's hard to say. I think a lot of it's just make your own call. Before you go, mate, you've got to tell me about. <laughs> certain <laughs> carpy member of the team who's appeared on two consecutive I couldn't believe it. I listened to it yet, like, I listened to it um, the other week, the Jacob uh, Worth one. I was he like, Curly, he's in. He he's in. It. He acts all carpy, but he loves it all. He this absolutely story's loves got it. something to do with him dropping leads and an unfortunate incident, isn't it? Yeah, the perf- yeah it does, actually. Um, so... Uh, no, not dropping. It was in the hooking. But uh, so last time I was on here, I was getting ready for June sixteenth. Yeah. Start the river season. I've been baiting a spot. Um, so June fifteenth, I managed to convince Curly to come with me. I was like, "Come on, June sixteenth, you love it. You're Mister Carpy. We'll be out there midnight. Rods out. It's going to be amazing." So eventually, he's like, oh, "Okay, like how come?" Managed to convince him to come. We did float fishing in the evening. Struggled. I think we had one or two each or something like. Like really, stood their proper where we've been float fishing. Most of summer, they're really getting clued up to it now, as they do every year. Uh, so we sort of left there about half ten after dark. Went and got some food, and then went went down to the river. And I told Curly, I've been baiting two spots quite close to each other. I said, Curly, this is where I've been baiting this spot. Those, like that's where you need to get the rods out. They should, they're all clear. Like just crack on. Let's get the rods out and get to sleep. So I got the rods out about. I was like in bed by sort of half twelve, one ish. Yeah. About four o'clock, I wake up to a bream, unhook the bream, slip it back. I just checked my phone and I've got a message at half two in the morning from Curly saying, just falling in and hooking a bream, pissed off, driving back to work. <laughs> I'm just like, what? How have you done that? Like, <laughs> Classic. What are you on about? So I message him back, go, you've got to tell me this story. What's happened? And just as I sort of press send, he appears behind me. And 
wearing completely different clothes to what he was wearing the night before. I was like, what has gone on? What has happened? And he proceeded to tell me the story of what had happened. So about half two, he had a bream. <laughs> and where Curly's fishing is, there's a bit of um there's a bit of a wall, like sort of three three foot drop to the river. Yeah. Um so he's played played this fish in. He's got this pipe, it's a bream, played it in. He doesn't want to get his landing net wet, uh, covered in bream slime. So he sort of lays down over this wall, unhook to unhook this bream, and just as he's about to unhook it, he's just gone <laughs> arse over to it, into the lake, like into, into the, the river. river. Head first. It's not a flat, fast flowing river. Like it's basically oh, right. where he's fishing is basically a canal. Like he goes up to there, he's perfectly fine. He's not dangerous at all. But head completely submerged, half two in the morning. He's got this bream still flapping around, like so he's in the water, like they're holding this bream and hooking oh, it. If only you could have filmed that. Oh, I don't know how I didn't hear. I must have been just completely out of it from float, like working all day, then float fishing all night. I must have just been gone because he's only sort of like thirty yards up the, forty yards up the uh, river from me, and um, yeah, he's and then once he's unhooked the bream, he can't get because, like I said, it's like a three, <laughs> it's like a three foot wall. <laughs> so for ten minutes, he's trying to like claw his way up, oh. trying to get out this river. <laughs> Eventually he managed to do it. He's like, fuck this. This is shit. Like packs all his gear, throws it in the van, changes. He's got a spare pair of clothes in the van, gets it on, drives back to here. I just put my bed chair up at work. He gets within like, he's like 30 minute drive. He gets yeah. within five minutes away and goes, oh, I'm not going to sleep now. Like I'm wide awake. I've just been in the river. So he turns around and drives back all the way back. So he just goes on basically like an hour, just like drive. Kelly, are you all right? Yeah. I, I, when he told me that, I was like, you did what? You drove all the way to work and then back here. And he's like, yeah, I just I wasn't going to sleep. I knew I wasn't. So anyway, he comes back. I'm like getting the kettle on. He goes, I'm going to go for a little walk around. He says, oh, I found some fish up here. I'm like, are you going to fish with me? He goes, I'm not getting my rods out. So I'm like, right, well, that's all I need then. Man, we managed to catch one. Go so, on. At uh, only 12, 13 pound. That's the least common, carbon but, moment of Curly's life. I couldn't believe it. When he was explaining it to me and I, and, and then, well, then we walked past the lake. He's like, it was there. I fell in, and I just see this big wall and like all these scrabble marks where he's been trying to pull himself up. It's like he must. Have, if you'd have seen it, it looked like the girl off the ring coming out of that. wall. I could just maybe. imagine. Imagine someone doing like a proper like late night dog walk or something. They just walk past and just see. Yeah, exactly. Just like scratch ah. marks at the bank and this beast coming towards him. <laughs> what a boy, Henry. As ever, mate. Thank you so much. Cheers. I'm going to go and get Mr. Renyard out for what will be. A fun filled podcast, I'm sure. Sure it will. I'm sure it will. Looking big, forward to it. Big love, mate. In a bit. Steve Renyard, welcome to the Nash Tackle Off the Hook podcast, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. How are you? I'm well, I'm okay. Um at my age. I've just done come back from Bluebell doing tuitions and uh I should know better. I wore those slider things. <laughs> too old for this business and it rained the other day and I've slipped up and I've done my back in so if you hear me wince a couple of times <laughs> that's why if you need a break let me know but like a it, true soldier you've still turned up so thank you very much no mate. worries mate a few painkillers later it's uh, it's all good old car, old school carp angler <laughs> nice talking of old school carp anglers you have an incredible big carp pedigree but also you've got some of the colourful chapters with regards to carp fishing through the years mate which we're going to take a look at where I wanted to start is I wanted to start with probably four absolute legends of the game. Kevin Nash, Kevin Maddox, Gary Bays, and Rod Hutchinson. At the very start of things, you've had experience with all four of those guys, haven't you? I have, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's a funny one. It's, um, if I kind of lead into it, I'll, t- yeah. I'll, tell, you where I, I'll tell you where I sort of started fishing. Um, it, it was, I, was, I was eight years old. 1977 this was. Uh, come from a you know the south coast. I live in the New Forest, and uh, there's there's not many carp lakes down there. You know, it's uh, and if they are, they're syndicate. You know, but um, mm. in those days, it was just go to go to a lake, and I, I, it was this little this little lake I went to. My brother and I had a little blue rod. You know, we're talking eight years old. It's seventy seventies. I'd flares, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was a victim of fashion. <laughs> well, we didn't have we didn't have a nooking match. You didn't have them in those days. You know, and uh, so I've taken my little prize blue rod and. Um, 
I, I used to catch cruisians and, and bream tents, you know, I've done it, I've done it old school. And uh, so my rod's gone in the lake. I forgot, like an idiot, like a Dinlo, right? And a Dinlo is someone from the, from our area, Southampton and Southampton and Portsmouth. If you call them Dinlo, it's someone that gets things a little bit wrong. <laughs> That's my first Renyardism of the day, mate. Dinlo, I'll <laughs> Din-lo. take that to the bank. Rich Stewart says that. He calls it Renyardanisms. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I might come out with a few words over this, over this, uh, this t- chat, mate. Um, that you might not have heard of. <laughs> I might have made them up. <laughs> nice. So anyway, my little blue rod's gone ping into the lake and Dinlow's forgot to do the clutch, undo the clutch. Didn't have bait runners in those days and my blue rod's gone in, straight into the lake and uh, oh, I was in tears, you know. Uh, and it was, my brother-in-law said, that was a carp. And I thought, right, I've spent the next 42 years <laughs> Getting my own back on carp, and it's, that's what—that's what—that was the the catalyst that got me going into carp fishing. So, carp fishing for you is revenge slash a personal vendetta. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. It's a choice, and uh, and it's one that I've 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 put my heart and soul into it yeah. over the years. The things I've uh, been in, the positions I've been in, the people I've met, which we'll come back onto in a minute. So, I then got right into carp fishing, and then it was about 1983, 1984. I was with my friend Chris. And he, uh, we were down this little local lake. He's pulled out this rig. Right? It's a hair rig. Right? And a boilie. And I've never seen it. I said, what the hell is that? I said, you're not going to get nothing on that. That's what, what? Of course, it's, you know, this is the first ones were Richworth. Who bought them, they bought them out in 83. Yeah. Uh, I think strawberry yogurt, I think they were. Or strawberry jam, something like that. And uh, I, I laughed at this thing, you know. We were well into carp fishing, but it was, mm. it was sweet corn and luncheon meat. Yeah, you know, and uh, and that was that's how it was, and uh, he put this rod out after I sort of berated it, and we, and uh, within ten minutes he had a twelve pounder. We were like, "What? What? This works!" <laughs> <laughs> so that was my introduction into you know sort of hearing about Kevin Maddox, but I didn't meet Kevin till um, I think it was I passed my driving test in nineteen eighty seven stroke eighty eight, and uh, the first person I wanted to meet was Kevin Maddox. Yeah. I, I was obsessed, you know. I was, I was very lucky where I lived. There's a refinery, and it's it's Exxon Mobil Esso who yeah. produces all the you know the fuels. And uh, my dad worked in there. My brother worked in there. My my brother in laws work in there. So I used to get him to take me to this lake in there. They had a 35 acre reservoir. And I, I remember the first time we night fished it, I had 2020s. 2020s in 87? It, it's, yeah, in 87, right? So this was unheard. I, you could just, every time we go down there, it was, um, it was, it was incredible. And, uh, you know, I was using the Richworth at the time, the Tiger Nut boilies and all that. Yeah. And uh, so I passed my driving test. First thing I did, I spent a month's wages. I was only earning 40 quid a week. And I spent a month's wages in my little beat up van. I had to go and meet Kevin Maddox. I had to meet him, so you could. There was two caravans on Withy Pool, um, and they, they they we were called the Gypsies. <laughs> yeah. That's what they were called in those days. It was you know it wasn't yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So it was you know you could rent the caravan, but you were only allowed to fish you know Withy um, from a Monday to a Friday because the syndicate was on there, and it was a rock hard place. Seventeen carp, you could fish. You know, it was one guy who fished eight years for his first carp in the syndicate. You joking? And, no, he did eight years. We had a massive party for him. <laughs> Yeah. It was us against the fit, uh, us against the carp. That was yeah. it, you know, and uh, and that was my intro into, you know, I got up there and I was, you know, I'm I'm, I'm young and dumb and and I can't say the last bit, but um, <laughs> and, and I, you know, I was naive, but yeah. I'd been catching in this that lake in the refinery. I'd been catching twenties after twenties, so I, I, that was carp fishing. I thought I thought that was carp fishing normal, and um, so I've got up to Wivy. I haven't been a fish out for three to four months. And, and it's, it was rock hard. It was a hard place. Every you, was it winter time or what, what, what were we talking? It was, what, um, yeah. it was September, end of September. Oh, so okay. it's a good time, but, but there'd been nothing out for three months. So me being young and a bit naive, I'm, 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 I'm looking at my angling hero chatting to him and I'm a little bit nervous, like, you know, but I said, your, your syndicate must be rubbish. He looks at me, he laughed, he smiled. He said, well, what is that then? I said, well, nothing's been out for three months. This little lake here. I said, he said, we'll see, come Monday, he said. <laughs> so I'll fish the little lake. I was battering out loads of carp at the little lake. And uh, anyway, Monday morning, I'm, out. I'm the first one out there. The other two guys stayed in the car and they got drunk, I think. And they, were, <laughs> and they didn't get up. So I did. I, got up. I, went, I remember on the right-hand front, I saw these fish, you know, a couple of fish jump. So I put a rod out, little little hair rig. And an uh, hour later, it's gone off. And uh, I've got this fish. And I went in. I went into uh, the office. Kevin was in his office. Um, I kept in the net. He got in the office about I don't know. It was about eight in the morning, something like that. And um, he's on this old-fashioned telephone. He's chatting to someone. And he said, what, "What's up, mate? What's up?" He said, uh, 
I said, well, I've got one. What, out of the little lake? I said, no, out of the big one. No, you haven't. I said, yeah, I have. <laughs> he went, what? <laughs> and, uh, so he slammed the phone down. He ran out there. He got there before I did. Jeez. And uh, he hadn't seen a fish out of his own lake for, yeah. you know, and he, he, had, he used to monitor them in the graphs and all that. And they all, it was only 17, so 17 carp, you know. So there was a, there was a graph on the, on, the, on the board, you know, and pictures of them. And, uh, how, big, how big was the actual lake in terms three, of It's three and a half acres. Three and a half, okay. But quite deep, you know, down to 30 foot in places. Yeah. So you had to get your, your spots right. But, um, so, so Kevin, he's come out. And we didn't have unhooking mats in those days. They weren't, you know, they weren't invented. <laughs> we didn't have unhooking mats. So I'm there and uh, I'm just holding this fish in front of my angling hero. He's, and he, he, he laughed. He said, I can't believe it. And I lost one as well. You know, that, that week, I only, I only had one more bite out of there, but I, I lost I lost the fish and it was devastating, like, you know. Yeah. How, um, big, how big was the fish you had? Uh, 28 and a half, which Ooh. was, for the late 80s, that's a, that's a big fish, you know. Um, we used to set our standards for, for, for 25 was a big fish. Mm. You know, there was only there was only at, at that sort of time. I think there was only about seven forties in the country. Not many thirties. Not like these lakes now. There's no. you know they're 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 they're, they're fish soup, aren't they? You know, we I used yeah. to have to travel hundred miles to try and catch a thirty, like you know, and, uh, and and that's what I did from a young lad. And um, so yeah, so Kevin Kevin then he said I I like you. He said and he he, he, he we instantly took to each other. And uh, there was a ten year waiting list that Christmas that. Uh, Christmas is when the syndicate started. I think it was January to January. I think I got home from uh, I got home from work, and my mum said, "Oh, uh, I still lived at home then." She said, uh, "Someone called Mad Dogs has rang you." I said, "Mad Dogs," <laughs> and it took us ages. And, uh, I went, "Not Kevin Mad?" Oh, she said, "Yeah, it, it, that's him." And there's his number. I was straight on there. He said, "Right, do you want a place on the syndicate?" I was. I jumped a ten year waiting list. Straight and, uh, on with the pool. Syndicate. Straight on with the pool, and, uh, and 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 the rest sort of. Then you know that's when my hunger for for carp baits and and you know so uh, uh, and and then it was only a year later, the boys, the trio, Nashi, Hutchy, Gary Bays, they bought out Catch Mate. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I was straight onto that, and uh, you know I didn't really know much about bait in those days, you no. know, and these boys did, you know, and uh, they're all they're all masters at their game, lot, you know, and uh, so I started buying their bait and. Uh, I was, it was working. I was traveling all over, the, all over the show, like you know, horseshoes, and you know, just traveling to these waters you you heard snippets of. There was no internet yeah. in those yeah, days. Yeah, we, yeah. There, was, there, there, there wasn't. There was nothing. You could, if you if you want to know something, you had to invent it or or get it by a whisper. Mm. And that's how that's how carp fishing was to me, and that, that still flows through me. I, yeah. I took a I took um a lad the other week. Um, we said let's go find this lake, right? I said turn your phones off, right? So we had to go find it, like the old days. Yeah. Bugger me, we couldn't find it the first day. <laughs> like, of course. But he said, this is so exciting. And yeah. I said, that's how it was. Now you've got a sat now going, turn left, turn right. Oh, there's, there's a fish jump in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, right it, it, so, so it's, yeah, I, 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 and he really enjoyed it. He said, I, I loved it. We found the lake eventually. And, uh, and, and he said, this is, this is proper. Uh, he said, that's how it was. I said, that's how it was, you know. And uh, so that's when I met, you know, I, I, I ended up um, using Kevin's bait. I used to I used to like using different baits and uh, so yeah, when when I think those three split up about nineteen ninety I think yeah yeah I don't know what the what what it was whatever it's not my business so um, Kevin then got into into doing Nash bait yeah and uh, and I remember that they were good I used to get it delivered to the locksmith shop I worked at and uh, my boss used to go mad because I'd, I'd try and dry it out because there was no freezer <laughs> I try and dry it out with the fan it, it, it was stinking ash bait and uh, yeah and then and then I got eventually I got on to um, I, I met Hutchie and he said look you know I've got a position for you if you want and uh, so I joined the team and Hutchie used to phone me at the locksmith shop <sighs> every week Hutchie would phone me um, probably twice a week yeah <laughs> and we'd chat about well, what that man forgot about bait is more than I knew. Mm. He's incredible. He was incredible, like you know. And um, and, and he used to send me, you know, he used to send me all these 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 different. Like he, he'd send them in little glass bottles, and he said, "Use this one. Use it. Right. Tell me about the the percentages." I remember the one yucca plant extract. Oh yeah. Right. It smelled of hardly anything. Yeah. Right. And I thought that's going to be not very good, like you know. I think I had about 28 fish out of Summerlee on it. I said, what the hell is that? Yeah. And he said, we can't sell it because it was something like 60 quid a bottle. Yeah. Um, but it was yucca plant extract. And uh, yeah, we had, so Rod, Rod used to, yeah, he used to, we'd chat about all sorts of things. And uh, so, yeah, and then, and then, then I ended up being on the Nash team, but just doing tackle. 
Yeah. So, of course, I've, I've, I've met Kevin many times. I've been up to the church. Like, I've had, well, I've had, yeah, I've only been up a f- five times, I think, to the church. But it's been nice to me. And, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit in a, a couple of things in a bit. <laughs> there, we'll start with Kevin Maddox. So, meeting Kevin Maddox, they say never meet your heroes and all yeah. that sort of stuff as a cliche. Yeah. For you, was he as you expected him to be? Yeah. Was he in every way what you thought it would be? Um, very, very sort of, very gentle man. Um, mm. you know, he's not like your, he's not like your sort of, your roughy toughy carp angler. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was, you know, what he written in carp fever, he done all that before anyone had done any of that. Um, Kevin was, Kevin Nash was, you know, he was, he was big on the bringing out the tackle and, mm. uh, and good on rigs, you know, but Kevin had bought out he, he, this carp, carp fever. If you've never read carp fever, Suggest you try and find one on the internet. Got to read Carl Fever. Um, Carl Fever was immense, and, and and so, but Kevin never ever spoke about much. You know, when I fished with him many times, and he would hardly ever, and I didn't want to be a punisher um, yeah. and and punish him while he's fishing because we're fishing, you know. And uh, but he done things. He, we were sat on Wivy right uh, opening season because we know ne- everywhere used to close. You, yeah. There was none of this business that we got now, so you had to wait till June the sixteenth, well, June the fifteenth. Yeah, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock midnight, you were allowed 11.59. Yeah, Kevin <laughs> yeah. used to let us do it at 10. <laughs> yeah, Slap on go. the wrist. <laughs> um, so I'm sat with Kevin. He's on the right-hand front. I'm on the uh, the bar swim. And uh, he said, right, whistled out to everyone. Get the rods in before it's dark. And uh, so he's got his rods out. And uh, I'm sat with him. We've sat there with a cup of tea. And um, he's got one bleep on his rod. One bleep. And uh, he's run over to it. He's pulled the line went like that, and then went whack. I'm like, what the heck? And that opened my eyes. And, uh, there was a £30 lever on the end. And uh, <laughs> that opened my eyes. One bleep, the man was on it. And I thought, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so, yeah. So lots of his, he, he's, he's inspired me in many ways, like, you know. And uh, he seems to have a great, like, qu- quite a scientific mind, no? Who does? Kevin? Kev. Yeah, yeah. But he very rarely talks about it, like, yeah. you know. Um. Yeah, he's um. Yeah, he, he knows. He knows. You know, but he's but he's very. If you saw him, you'd think he's not into all the flash tackle. He's not. He'll use all the old stuff, and you know, and and just not really, not really care. He'll have the old fashioned wellies, and you know. But he was the he was the first one to um sort of jump out of his bed chair. He'd have the, he'd have his wellies right next to it, and he'd jump into his wellies, and you know, and he and it, those things. It's all in it's all in that carp fever, you know. Mm. And so he he was quite an innovator, really, you know. And yeah, he's a pioneer. Isn't he? You know, him and I think it was him and Lenny Middleton or Ronnie Middleton, one of the two, um, that they co-created the um the hair rig, you know. So um so yeah, in in one way, it's you know it, it's sort of a very innovative mind, but he's um but he's very he's so laid back. He's 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 funny. We, yeah. we we stitched him up once. It's a bit naughty, really. But we got we had his little baby fry, and we made him a cup of tea, and we put him in there. And he went, "Oh, see that doesn't taste too bad with fry," and he drank a lot. <laughs> 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 but old school, you know, it's proper old school. Yeah. And, I, and I feel sorry for the a lot of people now. Don't they won't get that feeling of that car, you know, the carpy feeling, and you know, it, it, everything's set on a plate. Everything's you know, uh, I, I, I checked them. I went to the doctors ages ago. And I said about the the, the internet, and, they, and and he said people diagnose themselves before they come here. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. So the internet, everything's on hand, and and you know, so those old days where where you had to travel around and find a lake and, f- and suss out the rigs, and you know, and everything was marker floating. You know, we used to, I never I ever would not fish without a marker float, like you know. Yeah. And, uh, and now I don't I don't use them. I just use leading and uh, you know the yard sticks and stuff, which is when I first come back to fishing, like you know. Um, because I'll give it give it up for a bit, but we'll obviously go cover that. Um, but they said, "Oh, how many wraps is it?" I said, "What wraps? <laughs> what the heck's wraps?" Yeah, because I've been Tesco's chicken. Uh, ones, well, I mate. said the last wrap I did was hip hop to hip. Oh, hip to the hip. Oh, on, <laughs> Don't stop the rocking. <laughs> Uh, that was Dan Wellborn, and he says, "Oh, you're a legend." Yeah, yeah <laughs> so that, I didn't know what wraps were, and uh, yeah. but now I use those sticks things, and they are good because I used to walk it along the bank, you know, mm. and, and pe- peg it out, peg out the, the distance. It moves on, doesn't it? it it's it, but but you say, you say that, and you and you ask the question, Hassan, about the angling heroes. Those boys were doing the same baits as we got today, and they were doing it in those days. So oh, you have to take your hat off oh, because, because there was only there was and it was only them 
Ritzworth, love Ritzworth, and I was part of Ritzworth for a, mm. a long time. Very good friends. I was, it was like a family, Ritzworth. Yeah. But that bait was nowhere near the same like, as what those guys created. It was a different brand. You've got your, you've got your commercial, you know, shop sort of baits, and then, you know, nothing's really changed, to be fair, mate. It hasn't. No. <laughs> There's nothing that's really changed. Those boys had all that stuff. You know, we had amino acids and, and you know, there was everything. Hutchie had the biggest the biggest range of flavours and stuff. That, you know, there's, there's, there's hardly anything new. And people claim no. there is, you know, that, but there's not. And, that, and those boys need to take credit for what they... Um, 100, I wouldn't be sat here, mate, if it wasn't for those boys. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, 100% hats yeah. off to them. Rich with toots. Oh, Tooties, my first yeah. carp, I think, was on a rich with two. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever? Well, yeah. boily caught carp. Yeah, is. yeah. I mean, Mary Gray in the Wivy days, like, she she was the only female that I'd ever seen fishing. And uh, she used to just stick the tooties out there and, and out, out fish her husband, Dave. <laughs> what a bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about Rod, then? Talk to me about Rod. What were your dealings with, with Rod? Because he, he's a different sort of character, no? Yeah, yeah, very different. Um you know, he had a very, very um, broad northern accent, <laughs> Lincolnshire, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I say, oh, God, what did you say?" <laughs> you know, he, he, but but Rod Rod would talk about. You know, um, it wasn't ever about um, how you're fishing, what you're fishing. It was always about the bait and what we could put together. And you know, and it, it was it was it was nice in a way, but a lot of it I didn't understand at the time. Yeah, you know, so so Rod sort of. Um, it, you know, when things go over your head a bit, it's, uh, so I just, you know, and I'm going, Rod, I've got a customer in the shop. I've got to go, mate. I've got to go. <laughs> but he would just talk about, you know, the baits and, and what was going forward, you know, what was coming in, what he was going to try. And then he started sending me those things where he wouldn't tell me what they were. And he wanted my input yeah. into what the millimetres were. And, you know, so it was, it was more on the, on the bait side. And then eventually Rod, Rod was one of those sort of laid back characters and, didn't keep up to speed like like Kevin Nashy was up to speed and he was making things and you know yeah. and, and they were Rod I said Rod can you ever have like you know I'm getting sick to death of rolling boilies all I ever used to do was roll monster crab in there I used to live in a little masonette with a with 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 a girlfriend then and monster crab when she cooked dinner the next day would come out the walls. It would come out as there's steam coming off the pans. Where it come out the walls again. <laughs> so Did she I deal with that. The oh, missus? she got used to it. Did she? she? Got, yeah, she got used to it. The spare it was a two bedroom masonette. My spare room was the carp room, and uh, <laughs> the carp. Room. It was the carp room. That was <laughs> I didn't have it. I was on a, I was on a masonette upstairs. I had to take it all one at a, one bit at a time up these little stairs. <laughs> but um, so so um. Yeah, so it was more, Rod was more about, you know, what, and so I, I was I was the mad scientist making these baits, and it got me really into bait, and seeing what worked, what didn't work, you know. I mean, I, like amino acids, people go on about amino acids and bait. Rod was the one that said, Steve, don't put them in the bait, because they'll boil out. It, they, they die within five minutes, uh, five seconds mm-hmm. of being boiled. So it's a load of, load of crap. If you if someone's claiming they've got an amino acid, boil it. The, and Rod told me this. He, he used to tell me, oh, I'll tell you one thing in a minute, but that, the amino acid thing, he said, put it on the boilies after. Let them, let them cool, put it on there, let it soak in in the freezer. And it's stuff like that that, that those innovators knew. I said to Rod one day, I said, um, come on in, Rod, talk to me. Because right? the winter, I've always loved the winter for some reason. Yeah. Stupidly, I love the winter. You know, muddy and cold, <laughs> but I, it's my time, like, you know, and I do like it. And uh, so I said, what's the, what's the secret? And the man was amazing. Right? He told me quite a lot of things, but he said, listen to this one. He said, uh, a picture of car battery, right? you put normal water in it, it won't hold an electrical charge. Right? He said, what you need in the winter for a carp right, is an acidic fruit with an essential oil. You have to put the two in, in, the, in with the eggs at the same time and mix them straight away because they'll start, they'll start cooking. He said, it's almost like an electrical charge boilie. He said, it stimulates them. Um, they're, they're, they're little, the, the, the sensors they've got stimulates them into feeding. And what a, true, what a true thing. I used to use the orange oil, his orange oil, and his RH1 or the clove essential oil. Yeah. I battered everywhere, everywhere I went. <laughs> it was just like fish in the summertime. And that was one thing I've never forgotten that Rod told me. You know, monumental stuff that is. Yeah, you know, so it's still uh, fundamental now to bait making in a lot. Of, well, for my company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, even like the buka berries, they've got they've got that and a, and a, a clove in it. I think it's a clove, and uh, they work in the winter. You know, it's uh, so it's just yeah, it's stuff like that you don't forget. You know, so so Rod sort of you know 
And then and then I started buying stuff from Nashi. And uh, I remember going down, you know, um, a little local like Decoy. And it was a bloody long walk. All right? And uh, I've got my new Nash. We had brollies in those days, but mm. I've got my new Nash um, bivy. It's made of canvas. And you needed to be a weightlifter to take it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we had, you know. Um, Kevin bought out some of the first stuff, like rucksacks and all that, and uh, and and that walk down with the, uh, you know, with the with that bivy, and I, that went everywhere. And a couple of times it collapsed. If I didn't get the the, the, the brolly in properly, it collapsed over on top of me. <laughs> But the good old days, like you know, yeah. So, uh, so Kevin was innovating that stuff, you know, and he, he and that's where I sort of then ended up contacting Kevin and uh, and ended up being on part of the team, you know. And uh, what was Kev like? Because I've heard in the day he's obviously got a reputation about sort of in the day and him being quite. Yeah, he was very forthright and opinionated and and sort of yeah, he's just a dynamic individual, mate. What was he like? What Kev Nashy? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you think you've probably nailed it. <laughs> yeah, um, he he's um he's a massive thinker, you, you know, and he was he sat down with me, you know, I've only sort of he's only come and sat down with me while I've been on the church lake, um and um, but you could tell he was when you talked when I talked to him on the phone when I was uh, I talked to him on the phone and you could tell he was thinking about something else. Thinking about someone else, uh, and, and I think he's just got one of those brains. Like I'm, I'm not going to say female, but I can only think of one thing at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm brushing my teeth, someone talks to me. I have to stop. Kevin would get that one going, that one going, and I think that's why he's doing what he's doing. You know, that's why he's that's why he's living in a big house, and I'm not. Yeah, he's an impressive <laughs> um, bloke, mate. Yeah, yeah, impressive. You know, but but for him to bring out those things, you know, the chairs and 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 innovate, you know, and, and he's still mm-hmm. doing it now, like you know, and he's got Alan and, and yourself. And, Backing him up, and he needed that because he was on his own a lot, <laughs> and, he, and he, you know, he didn't have he didn't have dynamic people like that in those days. So, um, so yeah, he he could be, um, you know, I think I think he'd be a handful to fish with, because <laughs> you know he, he's he's you know he, he knows what he wants to say and he'll say it. You know, yeah. he's a bit like my mum. She's northern, like you know, she's from Manchester. And she <laughs> says what the bloody hell she wants, and 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 she's not nasty, no. But, but you know, um, she'll she'll say you know. Well, my nephew, who I talk about when we get onto Welly, um, he's just had a baby, his first baby, and he's called it River Lily. Um, it's an unusual name. Yeah. Right? And apparently there's quite a few rivers now. Yeah, there's um, a few rivers now. Yeah, yeah. but my mum got on the phone and said, what the bloody hell have you called that child? <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin's a little bit like that. You can take <laughs> the girl out of Manchester. Yeah. You can't take yeah. Manchester out of the girl. That's it. And she's been down here 40 odd years. <laughs> <laughs> what a time and what characters, mate. They are, as you say, like pioneers. But when you're at the, the sort of formative years of you carping and the development of that whole scene, you can't rub shoulders with anyone any better, can you? No, you know, fortunately for me, it was, I made, I made that effort to go yeah. 121 miles. I remember it from my house. It was 121 miles. I used to do it every other week. Once I got there, every, every other week I'd go up to Wivy, you know, and, and, and I made it. Wivy was a, it was, it was a boiling pot of anglers. Mm. Some of the best were there, like, you know, Rod, Rod Malin and the, these were guys that were, you know, I'm, I'm sat next to them fishing with them, like, you know, so I'm, I'm learning, you know, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm myself, it, it inspired me to be that person. And being a locksmith, you've got to be precise in everything. And so the rig side for me, that had to be. And I've always been quite, quite good at tying the same rigs the same everything's neat everyone used to say to me how do you make them so neat you know and that was i think that's the training from the locksmithing like you know yeah so um yeah, yeah so yeah I've, I've i've been lucky to to meet lots of people and, and i've also met you know uh, lots of other very good anglers you know yeah. over the years because there wasn't all this you know social media now you know some some nights i get like 100 messages and they can contact you which is fine but you know it's a, almost a bloody full time job, mm. you know. In the old days, we used to go to the shows, and that's when people met you. You know, you're writing in the magazines in the nineties and, and the two thousands, early two thousand, and they could only meet you at the shows. Yeah. So, so you, you, you know, and, and there was none of this bloody sending your message or look what I've had for tea or whatever. It's just bizarre, <laughs> like you know. And uh, I'm an old dinosaur with that sort of thing. It's uh, yeah, I've learned now. I'm, I've, you know, I've got a new phone yeah. and everything. <laughs> you're on it, mate. I've seen your phone. I've yeah, seen you typing mate. away at messages, yeah. mate. You're there, <laughs> gangster, new forest gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about Wibby Pool and, and you're fishing on there. And, uh, well, we obviously got developments of the Wibby Pool rig, but talk to me about your time fishing on there, mate. 
like I say, I, I, I used to go, um, you know, I couldn't afford to go every week. Um, mm. and, and, you know, I used to fish every weekend when I could. And, uh, but so I used to go to Wivy every other weekend. Um, and it was apparent, um, it, it was apparent that I found, I found Wivy not that difficult, but it was one of the hardest lakes. Kevin said it's one of the hardest lakes he's ever fished. Yeah. I just gelled with it. I don't know why I gelled with Wivy with really well, um, and then we started. Um, we were we were playing about with the old um, the old long shank hooks, bending them, and uh, we were catching more fish. And this was flipping, you know, the, the rig was flipping, but they was doing a lot of damage. This was eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah, the old bent um, hook rig. Yeah, eighty eight, eighty nine, something like that. We were messing. We were one of the first ones to use that. It wasn't me that done that. But we banned it as a syndicate. We all got together, went to Kevin's house, had a meeting, and uh, and um, and we banned it. So I started then trying to replicate that. And we didn't have shrink tube in those days. And uh, this is eighty nine, ninety. Didn't have shrink tube. So what I used to do, I had a semi bit, semi stiff bit of tubing, which was I think it was old John Roberts, and then I slide up one of the little float stops that float fishermen use. Mm. Slide it up, make a little curve, and then I would glue it in place. And I had, the, I had the little ring then. We didn't have we didn't have all these other things then. But all I had, I had a little round ring and I used to squeeze it in the pliers and make it sort of oval. And I'd put it on the bend. And this was catching. But it was catching in a different way. Like, you know, it was, it, it, the wivy now, if you were using it with a pop-up, it will catch dead in the centre of the bottom lip. Mm. Um, and in those days, I had a few that caught on the outside because that ring got caught or whatever. Yeah. You know, but this is, you know, this it, we, we didn't have till 93. We didn't have shrink tube. So, um, so, so basically, the Wivy, for those people that might not know what Wivy Pool Rig is now, essentially it is, it is a piece of shrink tube that extends the shank and sort of curves round, isn't it? Yeah. But you use shrink tube, whereas back in the day you're using this tube that you were saying. Yeah. But, but you're replica- replicating, sorry to mess my words up, the bent hook rig that you that caused yeah. the damage before, but in yeah, a non... Yeah, so, 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 the, yeah. So, so you're using now, I mean, obviously we've got shrink tube and whatever. Yeah. It, it's, it's a very kind... Um, it's a very kind rig to the to the fish, but it's a very hard one for them to deal with. Mm. It, you know, I, I remember back in the day, um, advanced carp. They they made a carp's mouth head, and it had soft rubber lips, and it had a sucker thing on it. And they they, they put I think I think there was eight rigs in there, mm. um, and they were catching between my basic complicator was in there that rig um, and the wivy. So I had two rigs in there that I'd invented. Um, and the basic complicator only caught four times. I think it was. Um, out of 10, 10 of these pools. And uh, the Wivy uh, caught 10. Uh, sorry, nine. Nine. nine out of 10. Nine out of 10, the Wivy caught. And uh, so it's, it, it's, it's one of those. It's very hard for him to deal with. But, you know, it just flips, turns, it strikes. It sat there like a little little cobra ready to strike, like, you know. Yeah. And, and always uh, used it with a pop-up, but you never used no, it? No, no, no. Once I yeah. battered Wivy, I battered it. I only showed Kevin. I showed Kevin. <laughs> he took it round all the lakes he was going to. And he, he then started using... Um, Oh, he started using it down to two inches, the hook link. Oh, it's still catching. And he said, this is, this is bloody special. God, I nearly swore then. Um, you he said, swear, mate. It's all right. <laughs> he said, this is everything special. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we, everywhere we took it, it was empty in moors. Um, it was empty in them. And, and so once I'd emptied Wivy, I, I should have moved on. But this was my home. Wivy was my... I was in it nine years, Wivy. I should have moved after about three years. What a place to call home, though, mate, but with all yeah, those people. It's just the people I met. Yeah. Like, you know, like you, you, like you say, you Rob Malins, and I met so many Kevin's guests that came in and, you know, fished with some amazing people, like, you know, yeah. and the stories and the, and, the, and the camaraderie. Kevin used to promote bad behaviour. <laughs> he used to go, oh, he'd what? get in the syndicate. Uh, oh, yeah, we used to go in the syndicate. Uh, we were allowed to put, we had an old TV with a VHS. Um, oh, it was yeah. all the old VHS. That was my first DVD, um, not DVD, I made with Kevin. And, and the, he, he, he picked um, six of us to make, or seven of us, to make a, 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 a VHS. Yeah. <laughs> we made, it was made on VHS. It was, and it was the Weirdy Pool. I think we made it in 95, I think it was. And that was the first time I've ever done filming. And, um, it's quite a funny one. It's, it's actually on YouTube. Yeah, you I've can seen watch, it. You can watch the whole thing. And I, I, oh, it's a funny one. I say, and I, I, I had an old mate right, called Robert Coop. And he's a legend, right? And going back on <laughs> us being naughty. Oh, mate, honestly, Kevin wanted us to be naughty. The only thing we had to do, the only rule we had was no, none of those fly hooks. Um, and we had to tape up our head torches. So it didn't, it didn't annoy oh, anyone. Yeah, that was it. Right? That was it. You could do whatever. So we were in the hut watching bloody on that little TV, watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> and, our, and half of us didn't have sounder boxes. So we could have, oh, I think, 
Is that a buzzer? Oh, not right now, boys. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the ones in those days. I had the ones with the long leads on and stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so so fu- funny days, like, you know? And, yeah. and, and Kevin, that's that's how fishing was. You know, now it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of backstabbing, and it takes a little bit of the fun out of it. And, and you know, it makes you want to move on from the lakes if it's like that, you know? And uh, so those days, it was us against fish. Mm. You know, if someone caught fish, there was a party. <laughs> we would get literally drunk as skunks. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a party, you know? As old fashioned proper men, mm. and uh, and so yeah, with him. But going back to Robert Coote, made a, we made this video, and he wasn't on it, but he we he was called the Gypsy. That's what he's called. He had about six earrings, and on that video, I've replicated him. I've I've seen it. Yeah, he, he had big long blonde hair, like a um, pirate, wasn't he? he was like a, yeah, yeah. But he had he had a little ginger moustache that grew into his mouth, and he used to just chew it all the time. And he was like, oh, mate, like, and he, he he was from a little village, and there was I think there was six pubs, and he was banned from five of them. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a mate of mine, and we we caused havoc at Wivy, like you know. But um, yeah, we, I won't tell you what he done. It was Kevin invited two females uh, couples into into Wivy. There was only one couple with Dave and Mary Gray and they were lovely. But these couple we're like, what? Women cart fishing? You know, you're talking about back in the day, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a bit like golfing, wasn't it? Well yeah. <laughs> it, it's you know, yeah. it is a sort of a working man sport and uh, and we couldn't believe it. So um Robert's going, we can't have this, we've got to put them off. So we had this little introduction party. So Robert, Robert's then, he's got really drunk and he's uh, opened the syndicate door and there's the, the girl, this woman stood there and he's, he's dropped his pants and pushed his nuts out the back of the... He's going, yeah, this is what happens down with it. <laughs> You're joking, mate. No, it's funny. It was Imagine funny. if you did that nowadays, he'd literally be locked you, up, you, wouldn't you, he? Yeah, you, you, you would be like, you know, and, uh, and I remember... Um, Oh, I can't remember. Ray, Ray and Ian, right? This other couple, they were from Manchester. And um, she was, oh, she was moaning. It. She First first day, she was moaning about this, moaning about that. Oh, the toilets are dirty and all this. And we're like, oh, for God's sake. So Dave Gray went and we had, we had walkie-talkies in those days. He went and taped one underneath her um, her bed chair. And when she went back, she was shit, shit scared. There, there was definitely ghosts there. I don't believe in ghosts. I didn't. There was ghosts. There. Oh yeah, Wivy, definitely. I had loads of things happened to me. I never. I used to think you're a nut, you know. I've, I've, people going on about ghosts because I never experienced it. But Wivy, I had definitely. I'd I had a plate go up in the air about three foot. I like, sat next to me and Charlie. Oh, I was no. me, it's me and Charlie Ratchford. We were only two on the lake. And this plate went up up in the air, and uh, I'm like, he said, "Did you see that?" I said, "Of course I did." I sat next to it. So what the flipping heck was that like? You had know? you been on the beers well, quite heavy at this stage? And touched any. Like, hardly ever. I hardly ever used to I used to drink tea. That's all I ever. Nowadays, I do I do have a beer and that, you know, but I never used to. I used to it was tea. Uh, unless someone had caught fish, we'd have a little party. That's like, the only time, like, you know. And um, But yeah, I'd, I had all sorts. I had one size 12. I was fishing um, this snag swim. So I was fishing Maddox style with the with the wellies next to me. <laughs> yeah. I I jump out and and hit well hit the hit the you know the, hit the um the fish in the sleeping bag and then get you know get out and um you you literally took off in your sleeping bag and hit the fish yeah you, yeah I was holding it in because it's a, a snag <laughs> but I woke up in the morning and um uh, and there was a one it was a size twelve winkle picker footprint one and you couldn't get to it the way I was with the bed chair it was down on a drop off. Oh, mate. Mate, and I'm like, what the flipping heck's that? Like, you know? So, yeah, I had That's a few, not a bit of me. I, I had a, well, well, John Ferry, you know, I said, did I tell you about the guy that took eight years to catch a fish? And we yes. had a massive party. You did at the start, I think, yeah. He got, he got, um, he got held down. He said it felt like about 12 pairs of hands, like suffocating him. He so start, he not went, only is he taking eight years to get a bite, he's being it, suffocated by the his resident middle, ghosts. It, his middle name was Lucky. <laughs> So he he and he went to these classes after and wore a pendant and all this. Like it freaked him right out, like you know. So there there, there was a lot of occurrences, and and I had one where I was um, me and Dave Gray. I said the one that had the wife Mary. It was only me on the him and, me and him. We were fishing either side of the, the big snag. So uh, about half three in the morning, it's still dark, and um, I could hear crunch, crunch, crunch on the on the pathway at the back um, of our swims. And I thought, I'll get you. We didn't have, um, we didn't, we, we had a mag light then. Mm. And, uh, and this crunching come in and I thought, right, I'll get you. You don't expect me to be up. And I was. And uh, it came in, it came into the, into the swim. I jumped up, went, looked down the pathway, there's no one there. <laughs> no one. 
Oh, mate, I'd be curled up in that sleeping bag, like mate. Yeah, there was Webby was it was known for it was known for the ghost lot, you know. So uh, yeah, <laughs> you were saying about the walkie talkie. Sorry, mate. I you. The, the walk, walk yeah, the walkie talkie. So this 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 it's, this is cruel, and I I hope they don't listen to this because Dave put underneath <laughs> Dave put underneath her thing, um, and taped it with this like strong adhesive tape stuff, and uh, he said, right, do your voice, Steve. So I've I've they've gone back to their swim, right. I'm going, <laughs> she's gone, what is it? I was going, shut that bitch up. <laughs> and I'm doing this, like, this, you know, like a like a Satan voice. She's screaming, right? <laughs> she's screaming at her husband. <laughs> she, oh, You could hear her. Cootie sat with me. He's going, do some more. I'm going, shut her up. <laughs> <laughs> They've come running. They've run past us in the night. This is about midnight. They've come running past us, slept in the car. Right, we reeled their rods in. We reeled the rods in. They left in the morning. No. They never, ever came back. <laughs> no. Sorry, Ray and Ian. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh, my a... God. <laughs> what a time. So what a point. Oh, mate, we've had... Uh, yeah, when Kevin when Kevin was in France, he's gone away, and uh, and his manager, Paul, uh, we're in... It snowed. Snowed about... Two, we've got up to one to two foot snow. Cool. So all the boys were down. Kevin, Kevin's away, and uh, Paul said, right, in the office, we went over to Kevin's BK Publishing thing, where he had all his bait. Yeah. So we all we were all given a five kilo bag of 20 millers, and we were at a catapult fight. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to go round the next day, or when it defrosted, there was orange boilies everywhere. Kevin was selling these off cheap, and there was orange boilies everywhere. And, uh, and I remember I hit this guy, um, Andy Fensum. He was in the hut. Right, so I opened the door, opened the door, pulled the catapult in, only mess it, and it slipped, hit him two of them in this forehead, and he went. He, I had to stop him from falling over. Oh my days, <laughs> sniper the, stuff. Sniper, yeah, it's a good old days, mate. The good old days. In terms <laughs> of the fish that you caught on there, yeah, you said you smashed it. We talked about the wavy pool rig, yeah. We talked about you talked about also using it with bottom baits as well yes, as yes, yes. Well so I, well, well, I emptied it. I, I, I literally had all the fish out there, and um, and and, I've, and I thought. <laughs> And, and then I showed quite a few people then. Mm. And there was pe- people were catching. Uh, it just emptied it. Year after year, it just kept emptying it. And then it started to tail off a little bit. Yeah. Because they could see that, you know, they, they, they knew that pop up. And, you know, so I then started using it just with the bottom bait. And it's all started again. Yeah. People don't think you can use it with the bottom bait. No. You know, um, what sort what? of, were you, were you literally just fishing boilies? So boilie over the top and then the wivy pool on a, on a standard sort of lead rig over the top of it, or did you it, did you change up your mix, or did you do anything? No, not really. The, the wivy works over over boily. It works over um, hemp. Yeah, you can. You know, it's one of those. It's one of those mechanically sort of. They, when you when you're using hemp, you're nailing the fish to the bottom. Yeah. Um, so you need a different type of rig, you know. And I always fish. I, I don't want to say too much because I do tuitions, and and I, so Killing I don't it. want to give away all my, all the all the right, secrets, you know. Um, those people pay for other stuff, you know. Yeah. So, um, but you can use it with hemp. You can use it with with boily, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, and it works. You can also fish it, which most people don't know, straight up off the lead. Right, because a thirty pound cart, which is what I trying to set my sights on, like you know, I've always wanted thirties, and a thirty pound carp can't do what a small car. He can't stay on the bottom because no. his four angle plates are five inches back, and I've measured them. Trust me, I've measured carp when they dip down thirty pounders. When they come up, it's between eight nine inches their mouth. So they're doing that, and if there's one sat right in front of them, bam, he takes it, Easy. and the wibby goes bam. There's no, and that's I've 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 done really well on quite a few lakes just doing that. And not telling anyone, just yeah. did it with me. I, I, I had them off in the, in the silkweed, just cast them out. Because it was, I think all I had then in those days was um, Black Dacron, it was called, Black Spider or something. Something like that, I remember. And uh, and, and then Croyston come out, you know, yeah. and that was, a, that was a godsend, you know. So I only ever used to use it with with, um, with um, silkworm. You know, nowadays I put it in a solid bag and and curl hook link up. I use that as a vehicle getting it out there. But mm. it also goes out with a four ounce lead in it, the wivy pool and so it's about six ounces and it does it donk. And then you can sit there confident. Mm. You know? You've got that little cobra ready sat in there. So yeah, it's, it's working a, for you. It's 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 a pretty good rig. <laughs> it's pretty good. How did you time on their end? You said you sort of smashed it. You said you were at home and you loved the sort of scene and the and the social side and the people that were fishing it. But how did you how did you sort of come to an end with regards to your time on there? Kevin changed it to, um, that's why we did the, the video. We made that video 
he put it to day ticket. And that was, I think he commercially looked at it. Yeah. We were all on we were all on nine years, most of us. The tenth year was supposed to be free. Kevin says, I'm putting this to day ticket. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> I think you call it somewhere along the line, shaft it up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> but good move on Kevin's part. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. used to let me come back up there after, and I did. Most of the members were peed off, like, you know. Yeah. Um, so they didn't they, they didn't go back. But I ah, I love Wivy. <laughs> loved yeah. it. Loved it. Um, you know, messing out. You know, I said about off the lead. I just spoke to you about the off the lead. I've just remembered. I caught the British record catfish in 96. And that was, you know, um, that was the first fish over. This is quite a good story, actually. I love telling this story. Go on. Um, I'm, with, I'm fishing with Kevin. It's only me and him on there. And uh, I'm fishing um, off the lead. That, that eight inch thing off the lead because of the silkweed. So I'm having a little lead about, little lead about. With uh, with an old leading rod, and um, I used to call this rod. I had a little sticker that I used to got out the Shrek, uh, Shreddy's packet, and it looked like a little sperm. So we call I called the rod the Spermanator, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had a little Shakespeare reel. We all didn't have all that stuff. I had, I had good yeah. rod, good main reel, rod uh, reel, Shimano's. I had bait runners, a double uh, single handle ones, but. I couldn't afford to buy another one just for a leading rod, you know. So I had this little Shakespeare one, and I've I'm leading, trying to see how deep the the silkweed was. Next thing, this bloody thing's ripped off in my hands. I didn't ever know because I've had the clutch done up. It's just flat rodded me, right? And uh, anyway, Kevin's come running to to my swimming at. He's going, "You better not caught that big catfish." It was. I said, I said, I'll drop kick the thing back in. I hate catfish. Mm. Hate them. Uh, I said, Kev, this is going straight back. He said, that's the British record. Right? That's the one I've been after for two, three months he was. Kept going out in the boat, dropping off this. And, uh, uh, of course, I've got it there, you know. And uh, I said, I don't, I don't want a picture with it. He said, Steve, that's worth, that's the first fish in the British Isles over £60. So it was a monumental thing. Over £60? It was 61 And um, so it was a British record. But it was also, Kev said, you'll earn two grand from that. I said, I bloody love catfish. <laughs> <laughs> but the little, my little reel and my sperminator rod, she gave up the ghost. The rod didn't, but the reel did. It mm. sheared the gears off, off that Shakespeare. <laughs> so Kevin had to run in the house. He got his gardening gloves, you know, those old sort of gardening gloves. Yeah. And he hand lined it in. And I had to walk back till we got it in the net. Because <laughs> it, oh. it had sheared all the gears. I couldn't reel. It was just doing nothing. What a story, and that hand lined by Kevin Maddox. Hand lined by Kevin. Yeah, it was funny. And then I got on, I was some... Um, God, I was good looking in those days. <laughs> I got on the front cover of everywhere. You still got it, mate. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was twenty. I was twenty six then, and uh, so yeah, that's twenty what twenty six years ago. Um, and I got eighteen hundred quid. Eighteen hundred quid. They all wanted it. Carp. I was the front cover of Carp Talk, uh, Anglers Mail, Angling Times, and, and, and a couple of others. And I got eighteen hundred quid. That's a lot of money in those yeah, days, you know. On, so. Boy. Uh, yeah, so that was a good little story off from the wivy off the lead. Just thought I'd interject that one. So. That's a beaut, that is, isn't it? Leading around, it's just snaffled me. Yeah, so. 60 pounds, massive, isn't it? It was, yeah, it is. I that's mean, a, there's a lot bigger now. It's um, a sizable chunk back then, though, isn't it? There's a lot it? bigger now, you know. Um, I mean, they're growing all over the all over the yeah. world now, aren't they? Massive. Um, well, it's abolished now, isn't it, the record? Yeah, that's so, got, it's gone now, yeah. you know. And uh, it got beaten, the last one in the book, book of records... It was the same one from Wibby, but 61.4. So my record went. That's the last one that stands. Yeah. That's, it was 61.4. So. Talk to me about Welly. Wellington Country Park, mate. It's probably where, bar sort of your writing and publications that we're going to talk about in Advanced Carp and the Weekender series and all that, it was probably where I think I clocked on with regards to sort of you and real big fish captures. Because Welly was, I mean, at the time the fish weren't as prob- as big as they 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 came to be, but it was pretty infamous for a really good stock of fish, mate. Well, it was it was one of those venues after Wivy had closed. Mm. I needed somewhere to to ugh, sorry, excuse me, um, to call home again. Yeah, so I started fishing orchid. Um, in between that, that was that was my next home, orchid, and I loved yeah. orchid. It had Arnie in it. Um, you know, so just before this welly thing, I'll tell you about Walkid. A little quick story about me, mate. It was it was some ninety sevens when it was the day that Diana was died. Was it? Me and Chris went up. I'd been baiting these swims. It was quite it's quite empty then. It's just just as Marsh, I think, Prattley just got it. And he said, You got a free ticket, Steve. Aren't we promote this place? You know, I I ain't paid for fishing for twenty five years, apart from Farlow's. <laughs> um <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, so so he said, help me promote it. So that's what it was, you know. I was, I was sending them into carp talk and that. But I wanted to catch Arnie. So I'd been baiting up there. And I'm out on the road. I'm out on the road selling, you know. So yeah. I've, I'm up and down the A34. I'm popping into Orchid, baiting up and going out to work, coming back, fishing the night, you know, taking off a suit and tie, putting me, putting me, me clothes, you know, me fishing clothes on. And, and, get, and I, I was so close to catching Arnie. I had two swims, right, the all alone and the pads. So my, my mate Chris come up. I said, right, Chris, let me have a look first. I said, I'm going to try and find out where the big fella is. Mm. Right? I couldn't find him. And I thought I saw a glimpse of him in the snags. So I said, I'm going down the, the all alone, the snags, and you can go in here, get a rod off the end of there. And uh, he comes running around, Steve, about two hours. So I've got a massive comment in the net. No. No. I said, yes. <laughs> but I meant no. So I thought, no, it can't be, Arnie. It can't be. Gone around there straight away. I knew. It had a big hump. Yeah. It, it, it used to cruise around the lake. You see, you know it was Arnie. See the hump. Yeah. It's, it's, well, you know, How big had, did he have it at? Um... This was ninety seven. That was thirty eight. It's one of the biggest carp in the in the yeah. in you know, the biggest commons in the country at the time. So we were gonna write what we were gonna do when we got home. We were gonna go to the pub and all this, and you know it was it was a good time. And I I caught a thirty as well. So it wasn't oh. all bad. Yeah. It wasn't all bad. Um, but then Diana was killed that night, yeah. and I never thought I'd ever. You know, I'm I'm not that emotional person, <laughs> but I never thought I'd. We sat in the car park in Abingdon, right, right near for two hours. Just in shock, just in shock. Diana yeah, it was mad, gone. wasn't so it? So all his him catching Arnie was the same night she died, like you know. And uh, so yeah, it, so, so that was my kind of second home. But it wasn't, didn't feel didn't feel like a withy. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm out, I'm out in my little suit. Right? I'm up, I'm up Yateley Angling, right? And uh, I'm having a fag outside, and uh, I could hear this guy on, on his phone, like you know. Um, I think he was on his phone. Or he was talking to someone. I can't really remember, but I know what I was hearing, right? So I I shuffled along to the to the um, carpet shop and turned around in case he because I was in the mags in, in case yeah, he, yeah, yeah. and he's going, you want to see this carp we've seen? And I ended up getting to know him because I was, then went up there. We want to see the carp we've seen in this Wellington Country Park. Ping, where's this? Mm. So I I had to have a, I had to find it. It was only down the road from from Yateley Angling Centre. So I walked round in my suit. I went straight down there, walked round. I had to pay two pound, two pound entry fee. I think yeah. it was to walk round, and um, sure enough, see some thirty pounders like and these snags and that. Whoa, can I fish here? And she said, "Yeah, it's two pound forty a day." That's what it was. So I went up to Welly. Oh my god! So the first time um, I went, I had I had an eighteen pounder. I think it was, which I thought well, that's all right, you know, and. Um, this was, ni- this was ni- about 99, this was. Right. And uh, so I went up the second time, right? And um, the two, the two, the king and queen of the lake was called the turtle. Yeah. We called it the turtle because it was like that. You know, I just spoke about Arnie. Yeah. It, it looked like a submarine coming at you. This one looked like a turtle. He, had a, he was a big, the big male. He went 60 pound in the end. He did, yeah, I he know. He did. And uh, I, I was, that was the, my first big fish out of there. I caught him, so. I caught him at 33, 12, I think it was. Right, so he was king of the lake, so we called him the turtle, and um, and then and then I caught one at thirty nine something, and we're, I'm thinking, what the blinking X in this lake, you know? And you weren't allowed to fish quite a bit of it, mm. um, you, so so we didn't really know what was in there, like you know, and it was just it was just thirties galore. Um, what was it, that thirty nine? Must have been your PB at the time, was it? Or did, would you no, had no, a fish bigger? No, yeah, I'd already had some. What one did I have? I one out of, one out of Wivy at forty forty pounds something. Right, okay. Um, so yeah. Um, so so the the turtle was a male, and he mm. used to put on about two pound every year, and he ended up, you know, he ended up being sixty pound. But sadly, he's dead now. Like mm. you know, I named quite a few of the fish in there because there was only four of us that were fishing it. So the the lad that was talking about it, or I can't remember if he was on his phone or not. I can't remember. I think he was. Um, so yeah, I've met those other three. And then, uh, you know, Laurie Tucker, uh, Paul, and someone else. So there was, there was, we ended up setting the syndicate up. Yeah. I, I, I had 10 members. The park gave me 10 members, and, and he had 10 members. So, but we charged 300 quid. 
It's 2,800 now. I know, yeah. <laughs> it was 300 quid for a year's fishing. And, uh, oh, it's amazing. It was amazing. It was, it was amazing times because there was only us there. Yeah. Um, Talk to me about yeah. your approach, your baiting, your rig philosophy with regards to that place because you don't really know, do you? You're going on there on an unknown. You've, you've seen a few fish, but that's it. How yeah. Did you, how well, did you go about? Well, I, I, I was really into um, my, the basic complicated rig. Yeah. So one I did was one I did in the... When was that? That was that was late late nineties. Yeah, um, late nineties. But I wasn't using fluorocarbon then because it wasn't invented. Um, we were, I was just using nylon, and it was apparent that this rig was catching fish in the daytime. You know, it was, the wivy was great, but you're using that silkworm and that. I think they could see it, and and it, it became apparent because I was into you know into sort of watching fish, what they're doing, you know, and I spent many hours doing that, watching their reactions to things. And um, and I sat there, right, and uh, I, I saw this fish come in, and he listed on his side, right? And I thought, he's cheeky side, right? He's looking for the hook. Mm. He's looking for that hook. Because you didn't get hardly any bites in the daytime on, on Welly. Hardly any. Right? Most of them were first light or, or dark, you know, up to... <laughs> And I thought this is a, this is an eyesight. This is they 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 they've got an acute eyesight in there, and they're not stupid fish, you know. They 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 were easier than what I'd been used to, but mm. they're they're quite tricky fish, like you know. And I know they're tricky now, you know. Um, and and so I sat there and I thought, that's clever. You one clever, uh, the one clever fish. And I saw another couple couple do it. And they they literally they would turn on on the side, go right up. So I I then right me being me, I thought I, I went and bought some um. Some green shag pole carpet. And I cut it off with um I cut it off with um standing knife and I glued it to the hook. Yeah. I started getting bites. I started getting bites then. So uh and I thought, hold on. And then fluorocarbon come out. Yeah. Right. Fluorocarbon come out. And this is when I was with um with the other big big name company. And they said <laughs> so they said, Don't 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 worry about that, we don't sell it. I said, Talk to me about it. Ninety six percent light refractive, so it's better than nylon. It, the light, the light shines up on nylon that goes through it, you know. And uh, I thought I'm gonna start using this, and uh, oh, the the bites just went up and up and up. And I was probably the first person to use fluorocarbon leaders, but bless me, in those days, I did them at three foot. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah. And eventually they got longer and longer. Yeah, yeah. But it became apparent. So um, I was getting more bites than anyone in the day. And they were going, "What are you doing?" I'm like, oh, I don't know. I wasn't I? Well, I wasn't telling them. No. You know, well, I'll give away your secrets at the time. Um, and then I noticed the little snails in the edge were all over the boilies. I'm quite clumsy when I do baiting up. I put five, six in, and I always drop them in the edge. And uh, I'm a messy person anyway. Not not at home, but fishing. What's yeah. in the state of my bivvy? Yeah, I'm a, they, when I'm doing the filming for, for topography or wherever it is, <laughs> Steve, tidy bivvy up, mate. They tell me all the time. I can't oh, help yeah. it. My nephew's the same, Ryan. One who's just had the baby river. Yeah. Um, he's exactly the same. I've, he's, he blames me. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I, I've, I've dropped these balls and I thought, hold on a minute. All right. Little black snails on there. This could be the next thing. So I then drove back up to Yateley Angling, bought a black marker pen. Because I know they don't mind the smell of marker because I was marking, I was marking with tubing and that back yeah. in the day. They, they, they talk now like it's a new thing. It wasn't. We were doing it. We were breaking it up. And they didn't mind the smell, you know. There's lots of smells they don't like, you know, like diesel and stuff. They really hate it. Rust, copper, you know, copper, your, your money, and they, you have to think about everything on your hands when you go cut fishing. Mm. A lot of people don't. Um, so I dotted this boilie with the black marker pen. Boom! It's a holy grail, wasn't it? That was the holy grail. Emptied, emptied welly. Really? I caught, I caught, I've caught a few fish on names. I mean, one, one, that's the biggest one that's in there now. He's sixty odd pounds. I, I was the first person to catch it, and I called it Scruffy Bob. Um, and what a fish. This fish took me on about an 80 yard run, and I thought, bloody hell, I've got Moby Dick on the end here. A bit had never been caught. You know, we'd fished that quite a few years, and um, and it had never been caught. So um, hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll find your picture and uh, you can have a look at it. Yeah, and she's yeah. the biggest one in there now. She's 60 odd pounds, wow. 62, 64, something like that. And uh, and Welly ended up having, um, you know, I, 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 I've been told I could still go back there anytime I want. On a free ticket, like you know, yeah. But I, I don't, I don't want. I, I've, I've got other things to do, like you know, um, other lakes to, to, to go. I've caught them all. All right, they're at thirties and forties, but what's the point in going to catch them again at ten pound bigger? It's not. I'm not into. I'm not into stats. I'm not into. I've never chased. I've never chased the big girls. I just like going to day ticket waters, mm-hmm. and doing, doing. You know, that's have a, That's kind of how I've mastered the rigs and stuff. If I, 
go in at weekends when it's the hardest. I've had a full time job with a family lot, you know. Mm. Now is a bit different because I come back and I just do the tuitions. Um, I got I got time to fish if I want, but I don't because I'm talking to anglers all day. <laughs> the last thing I want to do, I want to relax and, and watch, yeah. you know, watch a little movie or something like that. So, and also you, you fished it at, at that stage where like. It was pretty unknown and, and it's quite sort of groundbreaking in terms of it the was, venue. Yeah, it was. And to was, go back, you don't want to tarnish that, well, do well, you? Well, it was the halcyon days for me. Yeah. It was the halcyon days. I thought, I've been a lucky, lucky sod in my life. I've had the SO Refinery Lake where Kevin Maddox wanted to get on and he wasn't allowed. Yeah, have that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've got on to, got on to Wivy. And then I've got on to, to Welly and, and, you know, an orchid. So I, I'd, I'd had a, a pedigree of these. Yeah. Beautiful lakes, the best, you know, and uh, so they were the housing days, and and so to to go back and do welly again, uh, it's a numbers game. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bothered by it. Like, yeah, you know? don't motivate, motivate you. You talked about the basic complicated rig. Yeah, I remember seeing it. So essentially, probably when it was published, and we're going to go on to that. Um, it was fluorocarbon. So essentially, you're it's the whipping on the hook, isn't it? So it's fluorocarbon all yeah. the way through, fluorocarbon yep. hair. Yep. And then is it, it's like three or four whips, then you take and the then, hair out? Yeah, and yeah then, then you drop the hair, yeah. and then it's six or seven. Um, and you have to pull it, you have to slide it up tight, don't pull it over, pull it, because you end up a little kink in it. Kink, yeah, right. But going back, because I have got onto something else, um, uh, when I was with, you know, the other, the other people. You um, can say the other people. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah, I was with Corda. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Danny said, don't bother promoting it, you know, and, and it was too stiff anyway. I said, can we get, check with China, see if we can get, a softer one. Yeah. An IQ2. They used to credit me with it. I come up with, they, thanks for Steve's innovation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, they don't they do not do it now. I was on there for, for 10 years on their website saying thanks for Steve's, you know, 4-4 and using, putting fluorocarbon into the market, like, you know. And uh, so, yeah, and, you know, and I'm, I'm still on the internet. Before we had chod hooks, I'm bending the hooks with pliers, bending them. And uh, yeah, because because the it took me a year though, Hassan. Um, and I'm normally pretty good at sussing out what's wrong and what's gone wrong. Do I need to lengthen hook link? Do you know? And I, I said to Danny when he was doing the filming up there, I set him up to do that five and six. Yeah, and his rigs were getting shorter. Yeah. You don't do that with big fish. You don't. They always you need to go sometimes longer. You know, my mates uses up to twenty four inches, twenty four inch hook links. I've caught on the longest I've caught on basic complicators is eighteen inches. Yeah. So, but I've incorporated now my carpets on the hook. My dotted hook bait, um, I, I, and I've got a fluorocarbon hook, a uh, hook link, sorry, uh, and a fluorocarbon leader. leader yeah. And you never used to catch in, in, and that was that was the key. That that final bit with that dotting was the key. But I've I've now thought about the process because you're hunting, aren't you? You know, yeah. it, if you're hunting, essentially the internet is ruined. This, this is what's apparent with these tuitions I do now. Is the internet is a ruiner. Their brains are absolutely frazzled, and, yeah. I, and I strip them back. I say, right, take yourself back to when you were a kid, and we've got a blank canvas, and we're not going to ruin it. So, right, we'll forget whatever you've you've learned, unless it's really cool. Uh, and I talk them through hunting, and that's what mm. that's. I said, the fish don't watch the internet, do they? Or do they? No, they don't. A fish is a carp. A carp is a carp, and it has been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they do the same thing every year. The same thing. They don't look at a bloody spinner of this and spinner that, and they do the same bloody thing. They 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 get cold in the winter, give them a nice warmed up bit of bit of food, and they love it. They they you know they're they're they're, they're warm blooded like we are, and uh, yeah. and they need the same very same uh, you know um, like they've quite similar DNA to us. Protein level, they need to the say we need thirty four. Uh, they you know they they need omega six and nine. We need we need three six and nine. They're quite similar. We need nineteen. We need twenty one amino acids. They need nineteen. If you can put that into, and then they go through winter, get through winter. And what they do, they want sexy time. That's yeah. what they want. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they're you know I call it I call it because I fish in the winter and and um and I love the winter. Um, I, I, and that's why I don't use the hermit and the wivy in the spring because I call it clubbing seals time. It, it, it's it's clubbing seals. Everyone's back out and you know, and it's clubbing seals. And the fish just go mental for they they come out of that winter and they you know mm. they still feed in the winter. Oh, you know, and they do, and, and we'll go through that. And uh, they've they, you know they, they fit every lake I ever been on they've caught in the winter, like you know, and they and and, and the big girls. And um, so I can't remember what. Train of thought was on this one. What was it? What was it? Um, we were on. We were talking about basic complicated yeah. and the, the nature of the rig and the development with that. We talked about fluorocarbon. I yeah. was going to go on to talk about your sort of application with regards to bait on there. 
So what yep. what was successful with regards to baits and, and, and how you approached it? Because there's lots of there's lots of potentially fishing up to islands. There's also close range stuff on welly. There's a there's a whole abundance of different angling situations. There, there is, um, and but they're big fish, right? So I'm not going to give them. I'm not giving them small bits and pieces. You know, I'm, I'm a boily angler. Always have been. Uh, and that's come from. When my mate caught that twelve pounder in eighty three, <laughs> boilies, what the bloody hell are them? And then they worked, and that was it. I'm I'm using those little round balls, and I'm trying to make the best ones I can. And knowing that's what I was, that was the train of thought about what I'm saying about the um, you know, DNA and what they need, and when they come out of winter, they need the salts and, and the minerals and the vitamins. So if you can put that into your bait, so that's why I developed um with like Rich. I was using Richworth at the time on Welly. I'd left Rod because. Uh, uh, Rod Rod wasn't rolling any bait and, and I got sick to death of having to roll bait mm. I didn't leave Rod in any bad terms or anything it was just thanks Rod but oh man I've got to go somewhere where I can not stink the house out all the time and uh, <laughs> you know I've probably lost about 20 girlfriends I'm joking <laughs> I, I'm joking um, they were lucky girls <laughs> <laughs> um, so so Welly became I used a few baits on there and it wasn't stunning it wasn't stunning the results and I thought hold on these don't like flavours too much they don't like the flavours. And Richworth did one called Multiplex. Mm. Mate, that Multiplex was the one. It had no flavour in it. No flavour at all. And people buy it and go, I don't like that. Right? Because it didn't smell to nothing. Yeah. And, uh, but it had, um, it had yeast in it. It was a yeast product bait with no flavours. And I think some lakes, because different pHs and whatever, I think Welly had quite a high pH level. And as soon as I started Multiplex, boom. That was the one. Multiplex was the one. You couldn't... It, it was taking candy from a baby. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it, it, they just didn't want flavour. And that was more apparent. Me and Paulie, um, we we field tested... Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. It's a bait I invented. <laughs> for Richworth. KG1. KG1. <laughs> KG1. Um, and, uh, and Ultraplex. We did Ultraplex as well. And... Uh, and, and that was that was more of powder in that, you know, rather than a mm. flavour. And there was, it's just one of those carp lakes that, but multiplex was the one. So all I would do is I, the more boilies I put out, the better it got. If I put out twenty baits, like a lot of times I used to, used to do one rod, twenty baits. Hour later, another twenty baits. It was a little and often. Yeah, you know, um, and, and and it was Kevin that taught me to do that. You know, um, back in the day. And um, so yeah, multiplex emptied it. It literally emptied it. So when you put everything together. I've thought about what I'm doing, um, of, of the rigs, I've got fluorocarbon, and I've got, you know, I've, I've got everything and the right bait. So that's, that's. Winner, winner. It's a, it's a, it's a winner, winner. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like going, it's like going to a war with a, like, you know, with a rubber sword. There's no point. <laughs> so as long as you've got a sharp hook, um, a, a decent, a decent hook and a decent bait is, is, is key. You know, I've, I've had quite a lot of fish over the years and uh, <laughs> yeah. I've never had to use a sharpened hook. Never. No? <laughs> no. No. Don't use them. Just straight out of the packet. As they stra- are. Straight out of the packet. I mean, thinking anglers, when I come back, I'm, I'm obviously with sticky baits and they're kind of thinking anglers are connected in a way. Um, I, when I was on Manor, I was battering up Manor. I had 13, 13, 30s out of there. Uh, 48 fish I had. Um, and... and uh, some carpology did a 14 page spread on it <laughs> Renyard returns it was and, yeah uh, and anyways um uh, gar phoned me he says steve what, what what do you want us to send you some hooks i said what no i said i'm all right did you only had two packets he said you're putting on 30 on 30 because i'm new on this instagram like you know and uh <laughs> he, i said no i said i've had 15 fish on one hook he said change it you pikey twat <laughs> I said, I said, that's testament. So sharp nooks for me are not, you know, they're not essential. They're not but essential. Do you, do, you, do you use a bigger lead size? Do you do anything else? Bigger or? leads, yeah. I always use a four, four and a half. Um, yeah. So always have done, you know. And, um, and and in terms of lead setups, obviously we're not talking about hermit rig. We're talking about general, because we'll move on to the hermit rig in a bit. We're talking about basic complicated with a, normally a lead clip. The basic complicated. Or rotated. The, the, or rotary. The, the, the basic complicated is... Um, like I say, fluorocarbon link, yep. fluorocarbon lead. I use 36 foot of it now. Um, and a lead clip. Yeah. And I ram the tail rubber on. I don't drop the leads. No? <laughs> My tuitions are like, mm-hmm. well, we had those 680, uh, I told you about the 30s at Lydia, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had 680 30s and, uh, and 78, uh, sorry, not 680 30s. I was going to say, mate, 600, Sorry, at 680 20s and 78 30s. Um, and we only probably lost three leads. 
because I ram them on. <laughs> yeah. On oh, that oh. situation, on there's that, no, there was no weed. Yeah, there's no, no weed. there's no need. There's no need to get rid of them, you know. Um, so, so yeah, and I'm, and I'm using, you know, so I'm, I'm literally, literally ramming that. So they're getting, they're, you know, they got four and a half ounces bouncing around, them and I'm, you don't lose that many. You're going to lose some fish, yeah. No yeah. matter. Well, well, he was, well, he was one of those. I did like to lose some of them because it used to get weedy, and their mm. mouths were very, very soft. Right. They were very soft mouths in there, you know, and uh, I didn't want to cause too much damage to them. And, and also, you did pull out of them, like, you yeah. know. So yeah. uh, you have to go soft with the fish at Welly. Yeah, what a place and what a time you had it at as well, mate. Yeah, mate, it was, uh, you know, oh, it, it's uh, it, yeah, one of the sort of first to, to be fishing up there. I think they used to fish it in, in the 80s and then they, all of a sudden there was big carp in there. Yeah. And then there was this trouble, with uh, trouble in the park with fishermen and people letting their dogs go. Yeah. So they said, banned. Stop the All the carp, there's no carp in there. They told everyone there's no carp left. <laughs> so it died a death for 15, 15 odd year. And of course these carp are in there, they're munching away in the old silk gullies and uh, they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. getting like silk pigs. And, uh, and course, so, yeah, so that's, you know, well, well, you know, they had 2050s in it, not long ago. Yeah. 10 of them sadly died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Incredible is, place. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably again, another very significant to anybody sort of my age bracket was, was sort of magazines, advanced cart fishing. I used to be in, well, I used to get it every single issue and the weekender series that you did in there. Oh mate, it's, it's iconic. Everybody that's, that's, as I said, worth their salt in cart fishing. That's my generation would have read that in some form or guys. Cause that was media at the time. Talk to me about how that whole thing started in terms of writing that feature and that sort of premise of going out on weekends. Well, like I said, I, you know, I was I was a family man, um, full time full time job, so I only ever fished weekends when I could, mm. odd overnight or if I could. But so I took that 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 brainchild, that idea. It didn't start in advanced carp. I started it for big carp. Oh, right. With Rob Malin. I thought, I'll take it to Rob. And Rob got, I think Rob got in a bit of trouble and this and that and this and that. And it, I think he was sort of, you know, he was, he was kind of struggling a bit. So, and he, he couldn't really afford. So I just, cheers, Rob. Thanks very much. Top man and all that. Took it, the, took the took the idea to Advanced Car. And uh, and it was only supposed to be a year's contract and it lasted 10 um, was it 10 years? 10 years, I think it was. It might, it might be somewhere between 8 to 10, something like that. Wow. Um, but it was it was only supposed to be, um, you know, it was only supposed to be uh, that year's contract. And they all said to me, everyone I was sponsored by, said, what are you doing? It's commercial suicide. It's commercial suicide. You're going, when the lakes are the busiest, you're going to a different day ticket every month. That's where I honed a lot of what I, what I honed. And I learned the little tricks. This is the tricks I teach the tuitions. You know, how to go an empty car by the busiest time when they're right on their guard uh, and, and use certain methods. I don't want to go too much into them no, because no, no. I do want to save some things for, for my tuitions. And they, they're paying money for that a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so, so yeah, that, that's, that I, I, I can't remember how many total, but I put on, I put fish up to, fish up to 49 live on it. Um, loads of loads of forties, but loads of thirties. Loads. I did. Rich Stewart said we 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 young Rich. Oh my God, he's hilarious. He was. I had to drag Ollie Davis. I had to drag him out, take him out. When Ollie and, worked for Advance, yeah, when yeah. Ollie, yeah, yeah. And uh, I should drag him out of bed. They were they were, they were the kids, weren't they? You know, yeah. Rich Stewart. He was like a student, and I had to go. Rich, get up. The sun's rising. Get a picture. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the good old days, like you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. What? They, what? What sticks out, because that is so on point with regards to sort of how the industry has progressed and how relatable that is to to the average angler. Because when I was growing up reading that, I could go for a weekend. I could go and pay and go and fish wherever, mm. Cuttle Mill, wherever it is that you went. Mm. Like, that was easily doable. I couldn't do a three-year campaign fishing the Yateley Lakes, for example, because yeah. it wasn't reachable. No, so that well, was that was so, like, how can you say, relatable. So for you, in that time, what what chapters within that really sort of, or venues or significant captures really stuck out, mate? Because there were so um, many. There was, I oh, don't want to sound like a knob, 
because there were so many. Oh, man. Um, like I say, it lasted between eight and ten years, and I had, um, you know, down down here. Um, uh, Nashi, so I've done... Yeah, you did it. Yeah. done it here. I've, I've done... What I didn't do was go to the Easy Runs Wars. Mm. I wouldn't do it. Um, I, that, that wasn't that wasn't me. These they, We were fishing the hard wars. I did Yately Northlake. I did I did Frimley Pit Four Jeez. and had and had two carp out of it. And uh and, and you know, I did all the hard lakes, you know, uh, the paper courts and all them, uh Stanstead Abbott. But I did ten months in a row where I caught a thirty or a forty. I remember that. And uh, it was can he do it, can he do it? It was a thirty like every every, single every time and you know mad. Yeah, yeah. I mean one one of them I I did the one um over the Isle of Wight and that was the Isle of Wight record. I had a forty eight and a half and it was the Isle of Wight record. And I had nine other thirty, seven other thirties. Sorry, I had seven other thirties with it, and it was just yeah, that's pretty good. Talk to me about that fish. Sorry, talk to me about that fish. What the Isle of Wight? How did you approach that then? Uh, round stringer, basic complicated rig. That round stringer, that round stringer, yes. Right, that round stringer. You I know, can see that, mate. Do you right know why I done it? Why going back to the the the, the, the infamous three? <laughs> yeah. All right, Hutchie, Nashi, and Basie had that catch them 88, and they made these Scopex boilies, right? You would probably would have never seen them, right? Cause, but they looked like a, they were about that sort of size, if you can see that. Uh, probably 30 mil. 30, yeah, monster. Right? And, and, and I went to this tackle shop up in, it's one of Fish and Horseshoe, and they, um, they'd run out of boilie. No, I'm away, I'm, I'm away in the Cotswolds, like, you know? And uh, I can't get bait. Uh, so I, they had one bag, I think, of... Um, one bag of um, these Scopex things and one bag of whatever they were. I can't remember, smaller boilies. So I thought, I can't put them out. I can't put those big boilies out, but I'm going to put it as a hook bait. And then I, so I put on an old piece of the gardener string um, a little round circle around it. Everywhere I took it, it worked. It worked. <laughs> and that's where the round string had come from. Yeah. Because <laughs> I phoned up and I spoke to, I think it was Basie I spoke to. Um, this was about 80, uh, 89, 90, somewhere then. And uh, I said, have you got these bloody big Scopex boilies? He said, you can bloody have them, he said. Do you want them for a pound a bag? I bought about 100 bags of them. Because <laughs> they worked, even if you put them in. Yeah. Co- Cootie, you know, I said about Cootie or the Wivy, you know, the old blonde-haired guy. Yeah, the pirate. The, the, pirate, the yeah. pirate, the gypsy. And uh, he, caught, he caught his 40 out there on them. I gave them to him because he couldn't, the craze were incredibly bad at Wivy. So I gave him some of them. And uh, out he went, put back 20 of those out, and uh, boom, he had the 40 out there. <laughs> Mad. Yeah. Well, so that, obviously, pretty synonymous. Another rig which I thought was mega at the time, and I remember trying to replicate it but never really nailing it, was the Hermit rig yep. and, P- and solid PVA bag fishing. Yep. Like, there was a little bit of it, but you were doing it before, well, definitely before it had been talked about in the modern day constraints. Mate, uh, uh, like, wasn't even there. 100%. 20 years ago, that was. That um, was uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, we, I was do, you, using, um, I was using this old, old tubing, and it used to bend and all that. Oh, God. It's, nowadays, I use those avid leads, the stems built in, and uh, yes. uh, they're brilliant. You can cast them and cast them and cast them. And they, very rarely do they bend, like, you know, but the other one, when I had my bait business, I, um, I started selling the hermit leads. And I was buying carbon fibre tube, cutting it into into um, four inch lengths, yeah. sanding it down to give it dull, and then banging it. I was buying the Nashi leads. I was with Nashi at the time. Yeah. And I was buying the Nashi leads, drilling them out, and um, tapping in the, the, the tube. The insert, yeah. Because, you know, that 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 really helped that lead. Because it's on the fulcrum point, it, it weighs that, it doesn't weigh, but it's it feels like 20% more when it's up on the top of the tube. It, explain the dynamics of that hermit rig to somebody who might not have seen it, because I don't know if we've got an image to overlay, but talk talk to me about that. Well, it's basically, um, you know, it's a, it's a running lead, right? Mm. But it's an inline running lead. And it gives me the, the, the chance to put the wavy pool rig with it um, into a solid bag. But you're elasticating inside the lead. And that's why I called it hermit lead. It was myself and Dave Fuage that were playing about with this. Elastic's always been played with. And the matchmen used to use something similar. Yeah. Um, I remember him with you about 91, probably around then. I was using the silkworm and tying on just a bit of um, pole elastic on the hook link. But you couldn't cast it. It worked, and we knew the principle was there. Yeah. You know, Nashi brought out that um, trigger link. Trigger link's still there, but yeah. Trigger link's still there. Um, you know, it, so so it's not, it's not, you know, we haven't changed the wheel or reinvented it, but, it, but this hermit is 
knowing the knowing the tuitions I've done, knowing the tuitions I've done, the ones that contact me back, and that's probably 80, 90% of them mm. contact me back with Steve. This has changed my fishing. Yeah. Changed it. Just I've I've had people that um there's a guy that was on a syndicate, it was nine thirties in it, three uh, three forties, and he'd never caught one of them in three years. Two months he got the lot. The whole lot. So it's pretty special. It's pretty special. You've only got to move two millimetres and and it's done. It's over. I, I This fan come down, blue lights, everything, and it was the cruelty police. I nearly got locked away for it. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Animal cruelty. God, oh, like shelling so, peas. No, so it's, it, it's dab it like... You've only got to move and you can use it with any rig you want. Yeah. I tend to use it with... I say to people, I want to catch the... I'm two away from 400 English 30s and 40s. Two away I've got. Oh, yeah. Got to, yeah, yeah, I've got two to go. So I want to catch it on a rig I invented. You yeah, know. two right. <laughs> so so I use it with the Wivy. But you can use it. You can use it. My, my, one of my mates, um, he just uses it with the with the basic complicated. Uh, he just whacks it out there. <laughs> you know, he doesn't tangle or nothing. But I have to use it with a bag. I've got a little bit of, I, I don't know if it's ADHD or OCD or whatever it is. I can't cast out a, a, a supple whip link anymore without putting it in a bag. No, no. I know that's out there. I can sleep in. I can put on Netflix and watch a movie. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's presented. Done. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've done. It. I've done me bit. I've you know I've watched the water and whatever, and then and then I can you know I'm terrible now for watching. I never used to. Never used to. But now I'm I'm addicted. I, I remember like even the length of the rig. I mean the fact that it's running. The fact that it's got that elasticated element in there yep. is. I mean, in itself is a winner because how many people will do that? How many people will chuck out a solid bag type presentation with elastic with an elasticated element? So any of those tricky sort of ejections, that's gone. Well, well it's like, it's just it has, it? It, it's it's apparent. Um, it's apparent how much carp get away with what they get away yeah. with. Yeah, everyone would be catching, wouldn't they? So there's all those elements to become that good hunter. Like to, you know, mm. I'd say carp don't watch the internet. They don't. They don't know the social media. They do the same things. So if you take it back to basics, you've got a sharp hook, a decent bait, the location. You know, um, and you put all those things together, and then you give them an elastic rig. That's cruel. It's cruel. Yeah. Yeah, let's say well, if that goes in the mouth, touches you, you put you. You try and fight elastic, you can't. can't. You, it, can't. It, you, you only got to move because most people make a, they make the mistake of making that elastic too tight. Yeah. In that in the stem, you want it quite loose, so and it, you can't move. You it, it pulls in. It's it's evil. It's just bringing that hook point back in yeah. all the time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'd always thought about that. You know, like I said in sort of ninety ninety one, I'd start playing around with the, the hook links, but you, you couldn't cast them. We had to put them out in the boat. And I didn't like doing that. A lot of the lads put their ba- rigs out, mm. so. Um, Kevin was using um, he was using this tube right that had elastic in it and it had a little V in it and it was flipping deadly right it was evil it went through if you set it off right you had to put a bit of spaghetti right if you set it off yeah it went and it was evil it was too evil yeah um, and it, it would catch anywhere and you could take their eye out and whatever so he didn't really publish that one too much so there were there, people were thinking, thinking about it yeah, before yeah. before i did or, or dave foo is my mate um but we knew that you know that that principle i've been cheeky over the years i've not put it on i've done filming and people haven't got a clue yeah what, <laughs> they haven't yeah, got a clue why is there a tail rubber on there i yeah. think that why is that what's that what's that on there for hold on a minute you don't need, you don't need a there. tail rubber on a there conventional <laughs> solid bag. no it's got a bit of elastic in it <laughs> but i filmed it and no one's and i said to rich stewart and that i said don't, you know we don't want to show it <laughs> no <laughs> the cross. I, I tell you what also got me is that in that form in a solid pva bag it was quite a long hook length um, no, no, uh, not not really. Um, I mean, a lot of people. Excuse me a minute. Um, a lot of people. I said my back's hurting. No, no, you're right. Um, they take it easy. Yeah. Um. So, a lot of people use really, really short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still going for thirty pounders. Yeah. My target, or, or you know, I, I love catching any carp. I do. I love catching twenties. Yeah. But I want to catch these thirties. I don't know why I've been driven to do that. Tim Paisley used to install it to people in the cart well. Your target fish was 25s, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's always been 30s. Always been 30s. Five so, pound heavier. Go well, up. Yeah, it's just that, it's that, you're in that bloody club. Yeah. You know, yeah. I caught my first 30 in 89. And uh, and it took me a lot, a lot of years to get to 100. Mm. And I did that whilst doing the advanced carp feature with Rich Stewart. We were out and caught the 100th, I caught the 100th on that advanced carp on Welly. <laughs> and, uh, it, but it took a lot of years to get there. And now, it, it, I'm not being, but it's, there's, there's, 
bloody big fish everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's big fish everywhere. Yeah, the it's, abundance of big fish nowadays is ridiculous. It's, it's, you know, I used to have to travel. I used to have to travel from the New Forest at least to Surrey to mm. catch 30 pounders. Yeah. We had one in Broadlands called Penny and she died. <laughs> you know, so so, but now you, they're everywhere. They are literally everywhere. Like you know, thirty pounders are everywhere. So, so that so that so you you basically matched your your your, your setup and your hook length in accordance to that that. Yeah. Size so of fish. we were talking about the length of the hook link in there. So I don't want you know, small fish yeah. go in. They go straight in on the spot mix. In they go yum 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 yum. <laughs> they're small. They're young, and they're not. The older ones know what they're doing, so they circle around the edges of the bait. And that's where our, my two baits are always. They're always there. And uh, and if you've got that little elastic in there, I don't want it in three inches because right. sometimes they, they suck from a distance, big fish. You know, and that's why I couldn't quite get my head why this chod rib works. And I'm sure there's fish that never get caught on it. But that's a different story. Um, so I try and use it at about five inches. Yeah. So I've, and it's got a curl in it. So if they do suck it, in it goes, bam. And then it's the elastic takes over. And then it's photograph time, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's so it, another it, forty. It's, <laughs> but I only tend to use it. I had to bin it off. I had to bin it off on um, on when I started attrition's back. When I come yeah. back three years ago, yeah, 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 I was. We were on in April. We were on um, B two at Linear, and I had eighteen thirties on my rods. I was fishing. I had eighteen thirties and a forty three to twelve lake record, and. It, Oodles amounts of twenties, and I couldn't get. I wasn't getting any sleep. I was trying to do tuitions, yeah, you know. Carnage, and uh, it was car. So I binned it off. It's just too. It's too deadly. And I went on to the basic complicated then, and that's when we started catching all the well, all those thirties we had, like you know, um, yeah, on the twenty mil, twenty mil standard boilies, throwing stick jobs are good and round stringer and proper old school, I proper old that. school, but old school that yeah. absolutely emptied it, Winning. emptied it. Yeah, <laughs> everyone else blanking around there, and all of a sudden the local tackle shop started. He said, what are you doing down there? I said, he said, are you doing throwing sticks? Like, I've never sold throwing sticks, he said. Yeah. And he had to order in throwing sticks. <laughs> he yeah, said, you're play. doing that 20 mil creel, weren't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, thank you. Gonna, yeah, cheers. <laughs> it's to give me discounting. Though. <laughs> and then in terms of the, the, the chapter that you did of the weekend uh, on here. I've, yeah, I've done a couple on here. Go on, talk to me. You did church, didn't you? I did church, yeah. yeah. I've had, I've had Mark Colson, the old editor yeah, of um, Total Cart. Total Cart, we did one down here. Um, I love this place. This would be, if I could get on it, <laughs> yeah. this would be my, one of my little home, you know, I call them home. Yeah. <laughs> be yeah, one of those, yeah. like, I love the church, like, love it. I think I've had four, four 40s out of there and loads of 30s. Um, but the one with, um, I've had some good ones. I'll, say, I'll tell you about the first one, shall I? Go on. Um, this one for me, um, people have asked me, what's one of your favourite lakes? All right, what's here? Wivy, obviously. Welly, obviously. And the church. I've got three that I will, oh, I'll, I'll just die to fish that again. Like, you know, I love yeah. the church. I love the church. Um, he's created something special, like, you know. And um, so I'm sat with Kev and I'm waiting for Ollie um, Davis, who now works for you, <laughs> yeah. ironically, but he used to work for Advanced Carp. And Ollie, Ollie's got caught up doing something. And uh, so I said to Kev, like, you know, he said, Do you want a cup of tea? And we sat and chewed the fat a bit and I said what's these fish like you know and then he said oh that one's sort of um 39 pound I stocked them about 13 14 years ago that one's 41 that one is dead I think he said um and I said that's a shame it's a big fully scaled like well it's a small fully scaled in the picture because mm. it'd never been never been caught and uh, Kev said it's dead it's dead so he said, there's no way the anglers we've had down there um that's that's avoided capture for 13 to 14 years and I said, ah, oh, it's a shame. So anyway, I said, do you mind if I go down the lake on my own sort of thing? So I um, I barred down there, like, you know, and uh, I was having a look around, waiting for Ollie, like, you know, and I thought, oh, I'll put the waders on and I had a little wade down this margin. And I found this little clay hump and I thought, oh, I'm just going to put one rod out. Put a, I'll put a single look bait on it. And uh, about two hours in, boom, this uh, the rod went off. I thought, oh, oh, that feels good, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, dogged, dogged fight and... Uh, Sort of got a glimpse of it. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I got it in the net. Huh? That's that dead fish. <laughs> I phoned the office. I said, Kev there. It's Kev there. <laughs> I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. I said, yeah, it's there. It's £45, like, you know. <laughs> oh, was it £45? Yeah, mate. It was, uh, and it was, uh, it, it, out of all the fish I put on Instagram, yeah. I'm only on Instagram now. 
Out of all the fish I put on Hassan, right, that, that one yeah. goes across the world because <laughs> I do these hashtag things. I'm good at this now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a He's computer on genius. He's <laughs> on <it>. not. <laughs> um, so that one gets the more likes than any other fish I put yeah. on. It's special. It's special. And I might even, if you're a good boy, send you the picture. Oh, go on, the boy. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, yeah, it, um, that that's that was a special moment. And Al come running down, dancing around like he does, enthusiastic, <laughs> giving me a kiss. And, uh, you know, it, yeah, it was, that was a special moment, like, you know. Yeah. And that's probably my favourite carp I've ever caught, ever. Is it really? Oh, yeah, yeah. And they called it Renyards. Yeah. And then it got renamed Cuc- to yeah, the Cuckoo Fish because it yeah. kept coming out. And then it started coming out. It's weird how it, it, it obviously didn't eat a boilie before no. I caught it. And then it started eating boilies. You, you know? caught it on a boilie as well? On a boilie, yeah. Yeah, it was on a boilie. Um, it was... That was when Kev said you can use you can use a bait you've made for Richworth, but don't call it anything. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kev. <laughs> Get them so, locked uh, off. Yeah, yeah. So um so yeah, that was um that was a very, very special moment. And then and then I did another feature down here with Ollie again. And uh um bless Al. Al took us, Alan Blair took us down on the quad and uh mm. hundred mile an hour down there. My gears getting smashed to pieces. <laughs> and uh everything's hundred mile an hour now, isn't it? And uh <laughs> so he's taking us down there. He said, Steve, I'm really sorry, mate, he said, but you're gonna struggle and you're doing your live six pages live magazine feature like mm. I said, Oh no. He said, We've just had the boys down there, Tim Paisley, Simon Crow and all them, and they did a week and they they didn't manage to catch it and no one did the week before. The fish were just not having it anywhere yeah. like on the bottom and uh there was silkweed everywhere and that was it had grown up everywhere i couldn't find a spot like so anyway I, i've got down there and i said oh i've just found a fish in the corner right and there was no sweet corn in there, there was sweet corn all around the margins i thought oh this is gonna be tricky this is gonna be tricky and uh you know there's only me and ollie fishing on the lake like you know and uh and um so i found this fish and went up to this corner and uh, and he was making a little hole he was making his own little hole so I waited till he moved off and uh, I flicked some maggots in there because um, I wasn't allowed to use my rich rough boilies. <laughs> so I bought maggot, with, uh, maggot and corn I bought. And, um, and anyway, he, he's, he's, uh, he, bu- he buggered off. Once I threw a thing, he buggered off and uh, went, out, went out to swim and I dropped the hook bait in where the, the, the hole that he'd made. And uh, sure enough, Ollie's, Ollie's going, look, look. Like, there's three forties coming to this little oh. bay. It's only about three foot. And... Um, uh, and that smaller one, which was um, 3212. I'm giving it away now. <laughs> <laughs> so I flicked out some boilies, all right? And then the rod took, shh, Ollie stood at the, behind the tree with his camera, and uh, boom, off it went. We've only, we we unloaded the gear off the off the off the um, <laughs> off the quad bike, and uh, so I've, I've done that's feature done. You know, I've had a 32. Yeah. We can make a feature out of that, and that's how they used to work. You know, they were a lot easier than filming. Mm. Um, the, those mag features, we do we bang off 200 photos. A rig, a scene, a what? I then relax. Filming, you don't. Oh my god, I find that a lot harder. The filming, yeah, you're constantly. On well, you've got to be on it, you yeah. know. Um, you've got to be on it. But um, so I've had this thirty two twelve, and uh, so I've I've then said, "Cheers, Alf." We unloaded the, the thing, found a swim. I couldn't find anywhere, like you know, um, on the bottom that was presentable. Every everywhere, and it's that was why they they weren't feeding on the bottom, so the silkweed had grown up. It had grown. So, and, and, you know, without moving loads of swims, um, so I thought, I'm just going to make the most of this. And I don't fish cigs because I don't like them. You know, years ago, I had to pull a fish's eye out. And it was a hook stuck in its eye. And, no, mate. And I, I, I had one I had one mirror on um, on B2. It had five zigs in its belly, like, you know. And I'm like, oh. So I don't tend to use them unless I have to. Um, you know, I'm not saying I'll never use them. I mean, it mm. used to be called off the lead, by the way. It wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, someone's decided somewhere to call it a zig. <laughs> Bravo, like you know, it, it was called off the lead, and we used to do it with, with Ivy, you know, fif- yeah, you said, fifteen yeah. footers off the lead, like you know, and um, so I said to Ollie, right, I'm, I had no, nothing else with me apart from maggot and that, so I went through the bottom of my um, and it was a a, a Nash rucksack. <laughs> I've gone in the bottom, I've thrown out the chicken bones and all that, <laughs> and I found some dirty hook balls, <laughs> uh, cork balls, sorry, cork balls, and some dirty cork balls. They were filthy down the bottom. I thought it's muddy in there and whatever, and you know, dried out mud. So I, I washed them, <laughs> washed them off in the water, and uh, and I put eight maggots on this um, piece of dental floss, put it through with a baiting needle, pulled it tight, and it went tink, 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 like a, it looked like a, a Mohican yeah. that the old punks used to have. So Ollie said, you are not putting that in the mag. I said, I bloody am, mate, if I catch on it. <laughs> no, Steve, what are you going to, he said, you're going to ruin me. And uh, 
I was laughing. So that made me want to do it more yeah. <laughs> because Ollie was like, no, I am not. can't photograph that. We called it the punk rock maggot rig. <laughs> punk rock maggot rig. <laughs> <laughs> and Ollie's little face, like, you know, it was hilarious. But he really didn't want me to catch on it. But So I put out two five foot six and uh, on the Saturday. And um, sure enough, boom, off it went. 41.10. One of those, <laughs> this beautiful, beautiful mirror. I don't know if she's still in there. There's a lot of years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, gorgeous mirror, like, you know. And uh, I was thrilled, like, you know. And as I'm playing this fish on this zig, um, only in Essex you get this. Only in Essex. A hel- helicopter flew over the, over the lake and landed in next door. What? <laughs> What, what? <laughs> and we, Ollie's got the picture. He's got the picture of the helicopter just above my rod, and I'm playing this 4110. And I thought, mega, this is awesome, like, you know, this is a bit of me. Um, I, I want to I wanna buy the church, like, yeah. yeah. And um, so, anyway, on the Sunday, nothing happened on the Saturday night. And um, on the Sunday, I said, look, we normally do f- three o'clock to three o'clock on that weekend. And um, I said to Ollie, I said, you know, I've got a long way back home, like, you know, it's, it's, it's nearly three and a half, four hours for mm. me to get back home. I said, I'm going to go home in the morning. That's feature done. A 41 and a 32, 12. God. And the uh, punk rock maggot reg, mate. I mean, what more could you want? What more could you want? So I'm there and I'm using that dictaphone in the morning, like, you know. And Ollie said, I'm quite happy with it. I'll go and see the missus. He lives in Watford, I think. Yeah. And um, so I'm doing the dictaphone, about 20 minutes, talking about, you know, what, 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 the, what the things were, what we could have done, what I could have done better, could I have done anything, you know. Yeah. Um, so I said, look, guys, this is an awesome night, you know, don't use zigs, don't, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't condone people using them, I'm not like that, but I don't use them myself personally much, And but this one, it saved my ass, like, you know. <laughs> and uh, so with that, I said, right, we'll see you guys next month, don't know where, because I'll pick the lake and we'll go and see if we can get some more 30s and 40s. Boom, off the rod's gone. <laughs> That's all I've got left is two rods. The rod's gone off again. 45-12. A <laughs> brace of 40s in, in, in literally about... About 24 hours, that was. Um, yeah, that's good going. On the punk rock maggot rig. Look out, there's a new one in town. Bring it back, <laughs> mate. We can bring oh, that literally, back. it was just a contraption I made. <laughs> and it got me 240s. So those are monumental things you remember, like, you know, because I say to my tuitions, um, Every trip is a story. It's a story. Cart fishing should be fun. It should be enjoying mm. it, being nice to your neighbour next door, not going in someone's water, finding out where they are. And then it, you could have a crap time for two days and then catch a 40, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then that trip, is, it's a story. And, you know, and I try and make every trip a story, like, you know, my little story. And, uh, and, and, and that's how I keep the enthusiasm going, you know? It's hard when you talk carp fishing all day to the tuitions and yeah. it's hard, you know, and I talk, and, and you know, and I get them all to say my little new forest accent. <laughs> when I get them doing that basic complicated rig with the round stringer, I get them to the feather it down. I get them to say, that's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> they all do it now. They go, that's a boy. Even the liver puddlings bless them like, yeah, that's a boy, boy. <laughs> So uh, yeah, it's a, and you just make things into a story, and it's enjoyable. It's you know keeping yeah. that passion going, and you know it's um so yeah, no, that that gives me passion. That place down there it gives me the goosebumps. The you can see, you can still you still buzz off it, mate. Years mm. and years and years. And yeah, yeah, still... yeah, yeah. It's some um, yeah. It's so it, it's there's certain things that make you you remember. You know, my memory now. I, I I'm sick, so bad at remembering people's names. Yeah, right? but I can remember. A year ago, a carp I'd caught and its name and what bait I called it on. Yeah. I can remember all those, but but yeah, it's as, as you get a bit older, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but also <laughs> like with those captures, there's so much that goes with it, isn't there? There's feelings, there's sort of photographic images you have in your head. It might not be the actual fish, it might be something that happened along the way, it might be the bite, but it's a whole host of things that that you sort of take in when that happens because there's so much going on, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's, 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 a lot of people do what they do. They might smoke pot, they might do this, they might do that. Mm. And cart fishing for me, she's my mistress, like, you know, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, until the day I've popped my clogs, like, you know, um, yeah. then then I'll still be cart fishing, like, you know, and, uh, and I'm glad I'm back, like, because I, I had a big time out five years. And uh, so to come back and 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 enjoy it again. It, it wasn't a day I didn't go par- past me that I didn't think about 
Renyard's fish, the cuckoo fish. Yeah. Or, or you know, the, the big one out of Welly and that, you know, the turtle. The, 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 that's what we called that one with a big ump on it. We called it the turtle. Uh, I remember those things every every day or, or might dream about them. And so I know I still had that passion in me, but I was doing other things like, you know. So. Talk to me about that. So if, uh, it, it seemed, I mean, yeah, media changed, everything changed, but it seemed that all of a sudden there was just a complete decline of, of the weekend, but also of just general presence. So in that five-year period, how come... There was just that big drop off the scene. It was a it was a weird one, right? I was still I was a I was a Kevin Nash consultant. I was yeah. a Nashy consultant. Yeah. Um, and I never left. I never left Nash. Um, I just set up bait business. Yeah, you bait company. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had a I had a business partner. I won't mention names. I don't want to talk about people badly yeah. or anything. But he buggered off for three months. Didn't see him. I, I'm I'm pretty f- got flair about me. I've got flair. I can invent. I can mm. talk. I can. But put me into a business situation. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I'm, I was rubbish at it. You know, like mm. the bank, the the the, the tax returns, and I, I'm useless at it. I, yeah. I just don't like paperwork. I don't know why. I just, I think it comes from me dad. Like you know, so I, I in the end decided this ain't this ain't this ain't right. Um, you know, and then and then, um, then my dad died, and uh, you know, and that was a that was a tragic thing for me. Like you know, and uh, so I ended up just. Not going, not going. And the more you don't do something, it's like when you don't see someone, isn't it, for a long time. It gets harder and harder and harder to go and see them, you know. Mm. And, and it, so it was like that kind of going back to fishing. And uh, so, yeah, I ended up in a, a pretty financial decline. Um, yeah. I ended up in a bit of a mess, to be fair, um, which I've always had a life of bloody Riley. I've had a life of Riley. I really have had a good life. Yeah. Um, I've worked hard as a locksmith for 26 years. I was earning as much as doing the fishing as I was a locksmithing. So I've had a good life, and uh, you're here for a good time, not a long time, you know? And that's my philosophy. I don't want to be wheeled around smelling the piss. I want to enjoy it now. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so I've spent, I've had a good spend up, like, you know? And I've got some mad bloody mates. One of them's XSS, and we used to go gambling and all sorts of things. <laughs> like, it's yeah. spend, I think nothing is spending thousands, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, so that, that kind of, that hit me, it hit me hard. And then I met a new girlfriend, and, uh, and that was it. Boom, I, I was, you know... I was enjoying that life again, you know, living at my brother's house. He, he moved out into his girlfriend's. He said, I want to keep it there for a couple of years, make value go up and whatever. I had a 30 foot swimming pool. I was, I was having the life of Riley, you know, so. Uh, it's like uh, Dan Blazarian, mate, the Playboy lifestyle. I don't know who that is, but. Yeah, he's an Instagrammer, <laughs> mate. You wouldn't. Oh, well, but, <laughs> but yeah, basically that sort of living it up Playboy lifestyle. Yeah, it was, you know, and. and, and I missed fishing, but I also was enjoying what I was doing, like you know, and uh, and then it was time, you know, I say I've had, I've had money all my life, and then it was time the money run out, and uh, mm. I had to do something, like you know, so I got a job in at, at refinery. I had to spoke about the lake, and uh, I got a job as a high pressure jetter <laughs> of all of all things, like you know, but I enjoyed it because I've got that OCD thing, like everything's got to be done perfect. Uh, I was good at that jetting, <laughs> so I stayed in there for two, three years, and uh, you know I met some cracking people and some, and some arseholes. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird place, mate. That refinery, was, yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, and then I thought, you know what? Just get your ass back fishing. You, you, you need to be doing this. So I just thought I'm just going to go out, um, you know, uh, shut that bait business down. And that's why you know I had a Nash stand in there. People used to come in and I'd show them the rigs and they would buy all the tackle on that, you know. Yeah. And uh, I had a big, you know, a big four foot merchandiser and uh, and I saw loads of Nash stuff like bed chairs and bivvies and uh, you know but it, it, it was time to you know it was quite funny really I remember going um, I had no no internet I had no sorry no, no um, website and all I did was some all I did was Twitter and, and um, Facebook yeah I went on that Facebook oh my god oh, it just I have 5,000 friends in a week and they stopped me having any more <laughs> <And, laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, they, they send you the most bizarre pictures and stuff and I just thought oh I don't like this but but I did ninety grand turnover in six months, um, and, and with, with no website, you know, it was just. And uh, this is apparently it's going to be good, like you know, and uh, and the baits were good. They had pH balanced flavors, all sorts, like you know, and uh, cut off protein levels, like I told you earlier about, you know. And they were they were good, and they were smashing lakes all over, like you know. And um, I was getting in my van, driving up to from the New Forest, um, driving up to Fleet Services, uh, with a van full of van full of boiling, and coming back with about three grand in cash. Jeez. It was better than drug dealing. Yeah, <laughs> legal but, um, drug dealing. <laughs> well, um, even the security man in the car park said, "What are you? What are you doing in here? I see you often up here." I said, "Tell him Boily." <laughs> right, don't quote me on this, but I'm I'm a hundred percent sure I had a pot. Didn't you do black and white bait? Black bait. Yeah, I did a black one. This was this come from Rob Hughes. 
Rob, yeah. I asked Rob what he'd seen, his findings. What's, what colour spectrum? So he said cream and, and black. They see yeah. the best. And uh, so I called it contrast. Um, that was it. You did a black hook bat. I could categorically remember having a part. I might have poached them off a mate at the time and catching on those black hook baits because yeah. there weren't any black hook baits around. No, no, black and cream. I put the two baits in one bag. Yeah. I used to mix them myself. Literally, get them, get them in, mix them, and then bag them up. One kilo bags. And, uh, yeah, they sat, that was the best seller. But I also did one. Um, I did a winter recipe. <clears throat> and uh, it was a, it, it, I got stuck on the M25 uh, for about three hours. as a back accident. And I wrote down this recipe. So I called it M25. And it's logo... <laughs> It's low, and it sold loads. It caught loads in the winter. It was a proper, um, it was a proper old. It was like um, Nashi's X, um, that old strawberry crush. Yeah, and I f- found it from a flavor company. That was fantastic. That bait, uh, that flavor. Probably, I don't know if Kev still does it now. Yeah. You guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's wicked. That was a wicked one. So I called it M25, and the logo underneath it was once you're on it, you can't get off it. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> tagline. <laughs> so yeah, so I had, five, I had five baits. I had the Wivy Pool mix. I had one called the Wivy Pool. It was my old recipe um, from Wivy that I used to bang out, you know, bang out tons of fish all over the place. So I called it the Wivy Pool mix as well. So, so basically, that five year period is. Do you reckon there was, obviously there's the whole bereavement with regards to your dad, that whole process, which is, it's never nice and it's horrible and, and people have to go through that and uh, and deal with that in due course. But do you think it was, do you think it was burnout as well with regards to the amount of fishing that you'd done before? No, good, yeah, because what you've got to remember is I didn't do much fishing. I, oh, that's working. why I was called the weekender. Yeah. <laughs> I was working. I had a full-time job up till I did the bait company. I was working five days a week. So I only used to go two, maybe three weekends, because I had a little boy as well, you know. Um, I, had a, I had a newborn in 2005, so I was I was at home a lot, um, and I was only fishing the, at the weekend. So I wasn't fishing, I was only fishing day ticket waters on a Friday, yeah. you know, and doing the odd sort of overnighters here and there. And um, and uh, and now, I, you know, I still don't do much fishing because, you know, uh, because I'm doing the tuitions. I yeah. don't want to be. When I had those 1830s at Linear and that 43 lake record, I didn't get any sleep that week. And, and these people are not getting the best tuition they should be because no. I'm tired. So I just binned off my rods and they're fishing. That's it, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I don't get to fish that much. So I have done well, this last trip when we've come back from this lockdown. Yeah. Um, I did quite a bit on Kingy. I didn't put the rods out for about eight, eight, nine, nine. So I'm on Kingy and I should have done. But I just thought, you know what, I want to go back to Bivy now and just sit and have a Relax, dinner, have a yeah. dinner and, a, you know, have a beer or a cup of tea or whatever, you know, and uh, and so, but yeah, so so um, you know, going up to sort of bluebell on those traditions, I get to fish a bit more now because, right. and uh, you know, but some but some of them, I just give them my rods as well, like you know. Yeah. What was what was the catalyst or or what was the point that you thought, right, I need to get back into fishing. It's time now. I'm gonna do it. Was there a moment like that? Well, yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's something I've always sort of strived to be good at, um, and and I thought, well, you know, I've got I've got I've got a name in carp fishing, yeah. um, you know, and 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 it was apparent. That I sort of went back on Instagram, had a look, and I got all these followers quick, and I thought I can hopefully capitalise on that and, and, and meet some nice people, do the traditions, and uh, so that was. I, I'm running out of money, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. I didn't want to work in that refinery anymore, and, no. uh, and I thought I want to do something that I like before, you know, like I say, pop my clogs and uh, or get too old to do it, you know, because you do as you get older, you get aches and pains and, and, and moans and groans, and you, you, you're not 21 anymore, you know. I still no. think I am. My brain still thinks I am, but that's the beauty of carp fishing, though, isn't it? Yeah, man? yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, so it, it was time. It was just time to to do it, and, and I I was quite I was quite frightened to do, of doing it because yeah. because I'd had quite a good history as such in the mags and the filming and all those things. I was am I still going to have it? Am I still going to be able to do it? You know, you've and got a lot to lose, mate, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. So you know, and, and especially putting myself in that position where I was doing commercial suicide they called it like Danny Fairbrost did he said Steve it's commercial suicide when I was on going to Frimley Pit 4 and all these but I thrived on it I thrived on it you know I had, I had a great one Hassan um, uh, the Yateley North Lake a live feature and I'm there with Rich Stewart right and um, the, the bailiff Mark he'd fished for this fish it'd never been caught and uh, he'd fished for this fish he gets five spots going and he said he couldn't catch it he said I can't catch it and uh 
So he showed me a couple of spots, and sure enough, I walked down there. There's this big long fish, and uh, he's for three years he's he's been trying to catch that. And uh, so I said to Rich, I'm going to get the rod. Then I said, thanks, Mark. I'll have a go. You know, it's a nice angle on the on the footage, like you know, on the on the weekend of thing. And uh, found it. I went went back flu- little fluorocarbon link fluorocarbon fluorocarbon leader and a, and a little stones lid. Oh, you add in the bag. Oh, yeah. Just flopped it together and uh, <laughs> just put twenty maggots on it and a little bag of maggot. And I just dropped it in there where I'd seen that fish. Got it back to the edge and it went whop. <laughs> it's gone off and it's a big fish. I see it straight away because it was stuck in weed and that and. Uh, um, awesome moment, but I caught it in about 45 seconds. And poor Mark had been fishing for that for three years. What, did he, what was so, his reaction to that? He loved it. Oh, did he? Yeah, he yeah. loved it. He said, I wanted to see how big it was. It was 33, 33 something. And, uh, oh, it's a fish and a half. And we got the, we got the quintessential picture of the Yately now in the water with it, like, you know, and, yeah. uh, Rich Stewart took all those cause he's, he's good at photography, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> not very good Pretty at getting handy. out of bed. <laughs> he's not very good at getting out of bed. <laughs> well, I still have to get him on the magazine fix. You have to get him, go and get him up out of bed. So well, he's know. like a student, wasn't he? So, uh, you know what they say, mate, you can't rush art, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. Any more laid back. Mate, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's so, result so yeah, that was, was, that was a good one, like you know. But when you came back, um, I think I saw it primarily on on the sticky, um, maybe not the thinking angler stuff at the, at the start, but the sticky website. You went on some absolutely ridiculous run of forties and thirties. I remember the Lynch Hill captures. Talk me through getting in with sticky, coming back, and also that that first hit of. Big fish because it was ridiculous. It was through the winter, I remember. Well, it was a weird. It was a weird one. Like I say, you you have to think sort of you know financially what you're going to do, what we're going to do. And it, I had I had at the time spoke to a, a bait company that was going to make me 100 kilos of bait. I'll go and work for them for a few days a week. They were going to give me 100 kilos of my own bait that I could sell, which I should have done it. <laughs> but Dan Wildbore um, and Alan Blair said you're back fishing. He sent me an email. Alan did, and he said we'll, we'll take you back as a consultant. But I, at the time, I yeah. didn't. I didn't feel um, mentally right to to be back as a consultant. I didn't want to be. I wanted to find out the feel of how things were in this new modern world, like you know, um, of, of you know, like Instagrams and Facebooks, and you know. And uh, so I, I, just, I just said, Dan Wildball said we'll have you in a heartbeat. Um, so I just said, right, okay. So they, we we organised a package of, uh, you know, financial reward. And, and and they said, you can do your tuitions, whatever you want, with the bait. So that kind of was a no-brainer. I got, you know, uh, 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 the people I do the tuitions for, mainly day ticket fishermen, they go into shops and buy bait. Yeah. So commercially, it was the right move to do. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, so I started out, I started out on... Um, I did me. I did my birthday down at, um, on B two. We had the back bits shut off, um, and I had all my mates come down. And then, then I moved on to Manor Manor Farm, and I had forty eight fish, thirteen thirties. And this was the start of it. Like you know, was this the throwing stick krill boilies? Um, no, that was so? that. No, that was. Um, I, I was grinding it up on Manor. Manor's quite can be quite tricky, so I was yeah. grinding it up and and spomming it, the spomming out just what I call baby food. Give them baby food, and uh, so so it's a method I used on there before, and it really works. Years and years before that, and uh, and it really works. And um, so yeah, I had, had forty eight feet. I lost I lost Kempy's Kempy's right right at the net. Yeah, I lost it. So and then I thought, right, where, where can I go? And then the boy Sticky had a connection with Lynch Hill, so they got me down there, and I started in October. And um, and a couple of the lads, they don't come out in here past October really. They hardly ever come out and. But I thought I'd heard I'd heard someone um, I think it's um, Miles Gibson I think he had something mm. like two for two or three forties in January I thought they do come out like you know so I used my um, I started fishing on there and I had a, what did I have a 30, first fish was a thirty five uh, then I had a forty five. Um, called oh. Beddies, I think it was, and uh, what a fish that was, you know. And I was, I was just kept catching, you know. And every other fish was, every other fish was either a forty or thirty. How are we and, catching them? Um, what we spoke about, <laughs> Wibby pool rig, solid bag. And uh, the one thing I noticed about that place was I was getting lots of liners, too many for my liking. A lot of people like having liners. I wanted to convert them to a run, <laughs> and I thought they're they've clocked, they've clocked that pop up. So I went to a just kept the hermit on there, the elastic. I just went to a um a um 
just what I, what I call a um oh, what, what's it's not even the name of a rig. I just just a little standard hair rig, but with a very, the hook bait dead close to the hook, right. and then I weighted it um right the way round to the to the almost to the bar with silicon, so it just flipped, and and I weighted it in the mouth, and the elastic then takes in, and uh, and that was the key. That was the key then, and uh, so I, I I then um I did a second session down there, and uh, that's when I caught my three hundredth English thirty. Um, I caught Toe Jam, the one they all wanted, this 40 odd pound common. I've seen that. And, yeah. uh, and then the fully scaled, I had the big, she's the banger, she's the queen <laughs> of the lake, that fully scaled. I had those as a bracelet, you know. So that was filmed, like, you know. And, How uh, did you feel there? Because, as you said, when you come back, there's a lot to lose. Even though you don't need to prove anything to anyone because of what you've done and what you've caught and, and everything else, I know that you felt that and you felt some sort of pressure. When when you'd come back and and it was just that ridiculous run of fish, how did you feel in yourself at that point? Back to back to normal. Um, I just I, I don't think of it. As soon as I've had that thirty and I've taken that picture, she's going back out. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, I, I'll just carry on. I've, I'm a bit of a bit of a machine like that. You know, other parts of my life, I've got I'm so lapsadaisical, but with carp fishing. Get it back out. <laughs> Job next done. One, next so one. As, yeah, next one, next one. And uh and, and to be fair, you know, I couldn't quite believe this run of thirties and forties. Even, you know, I thought this is my dad looking down on me. <laughs> it's like Did you? Uh, so, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. Some um, and, and yeah. Uh, so I did this the second session, had those fish, and then someone said, Oh, you wanna have a golden willow, you know? Um they don't they don't come out those big ones, hardly ever. And uh this was this was end of December and um I walked around the I walked around the lake and uh, I smelt them. I, I smelt where they were, and um, I thought I'm coming in here. I sat there like a dinlo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was on dinlo. Um, I sat there in the rain with a non-waterproof coat on, and for two hours, and I saw them flanking, and I thought, hold on, there's a there's a clay spot here. They're rubbing against the clay, and uh, so I um, sat there and I thought, right, I got a lead, five ounce lead, dropped it on there, and. Um, Sure enough, come back with clay on it, grey clay. I thought, yes, found you, gotcha. And uh, I run back to the, you have to you have to walk all the way back to the car park, literally about a bloody mile. I, I, I walked in the rain, got me waders, and uh, waded out, put it out to this spot, found it. Yeah, I just come off of this clay hump, and uh, and these fish don't come out apparently. I'm but bearing in mind this is December, end of December, about the eighteenth, nineteenth, and um, and. I just put, put out put out a load of um, Manila all ground up put it along this snag and along that sort of hump thing and uh, that night I had four four thirties in the Lake Record Common thirty nine something. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah. and it was like and then my mate rang me because he was coming up from Cornwall. Tom Tom Rushby. He's uh, he looks like a Viking. He's like a, he does. <laughs> oh, he's bless him. A lady hillbilly he is. And um <laughs> and he came up and he said, oh, I don't want to fish here, Steve. I said, No. I said, I'm on a roll here. He said, No, it's too hard. I'm only up here for two nights. So um, he said, "Can we go to Can we go to St John's?" Oh, for God's sake! I was just all I thought about was wheeling that barrow down that bloody track. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I did it because he's come up from Cornwall. Yeah, and, uh, and um, so we went on St John's, right? And it was oh, it was pretty much empty. And uh, it's Christmas, just you know, twenty twenty second, twenty third of December it was. Um, and so I said, right, I'll put my bucket in the point because then they're well renowned for um, you know winter winter form. So I said, you put your bucket in that one, I'll put mine in that one, and I'll just go in that little bay there. And I said, and it's dark in an hour, so no one's going to come down, and then you've got the two areas. So I said, I'll just go in the little shitty channel. <laughs> I had the hermit and the wivy, just what we've been talking about, and because uh, that is my winter choice. And um, and, and I just thought, oh, you know what, I'm just going to pop them out at 14 wraps. 14 wraps, put a, put a few baits on them, put them out, and uh, it went off a couple of hours, 33 Oh, he went, just let me have one time, he said. <laughs> so, um, so, and then I had a 29, all right? And uh, bless him, Tom had a 38. Common. Oh, nice. So, yes, it was like that. Yeah. And he's going, hey, I've outfished you once. I've caught a bigger fish than you. I said, Fair play to you. So, um, we, had a, we had a couple of drinks that he brought up this moonshine. <laughs> oh, no. Nice. Like, yeah, I told you, he's a hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be out in, out in the Everglades, like shooting alligators. Gator man. Yeah, so he brought up this, and um, we've got, you know, it's Christmas. So, we're having a Christmas drink and yeah. that. And uh, so, in the morning, he come over, he said, any more? I said, nah, no, nah, I've, I've had a couple of liners. And with that, as he said it, up the rod goes. Oh, this one feels all right. <laughs> it's the box common at 46.4. <laughs> Oh 
man. He went, you beat me, you knob. <laughs> so, yeah, 23rd of December that was. So, it was a, yeah, my run kept going. We got, went from, you know, went from Manor to, to Lynch Hill, to that willow at Lynch Hill, and then back to St. John's. And uh, and then I went down to Fursbury and uh, had a little invite down to Fursbury. And uh, it's only a tiny little lake in Devon, but it's got 840s in it. Um and um and quite a few thirties and uh, so I'm chatting to Tony and he said Steve they, 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 I won't ta- I won't say the name of the company because they went there and they blanked for a week and um they did filming and they've never put it on the internet because they didn't catch nothing so I won't tell you who it was but um he said nothing's been out for two two weeks I said oh okay <laughs> so he said here's my private number I'm with mobile and he said get anything or, or you need a hand I'm out on the farm it's a big estate lot you know. He said, uh, "Don't ring me for nothing because I'm quite busy." I said, "Well, I wouldn't do that anyway." Yeah. And uh, and anyway, sort of hour and a half, uh, the rod's gone off, and uh, it's thirty-five twelve zip linear. And I phoned, phoned him. He said, well, "What's up, mate? You're right." I said, "Yeah, I got one." Fuck off, he said. <laughs> Have you really? Don't make me come back. He says, "If you haven't, if you're messing," I said, "No, I got one." He said, "Shit, the bed." <laughs> <laughs> so he came back. He came back and blessed his cottons, Tony. He said, uh, "I left it in the net, still hooked." And uh, it was on a platform, so, so I couldn't get out. And um, he said, have you read my rules? No. He said, have you read the website? I said, no. I don't even know what fish you got in here. I said, I keep a blank canvas. I don't want to know. Mm. I don't want to know. He said, well, start with it's barbless. I said, oh, oh, sorry. He says, don't worry about it. <laughs> Bless his cottons. He knew because I'd yeah, handled done. fish. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was okay, like, you know. So he said, I'll tell you what. I showed him the rig, what we'd just been talking about. Mm. And... Um, he went, wow, clever. He said, I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a, I won't use the word on here, what he called it, right? It's a very bad swear word. <laughs> it's shit something, right? And uh, he said, this fish is one of them. He said, it's a mid four, he's got a big dip in its back. People have been coming here eight years to catch that and spent a lot of money trying to catch him. He's called Drop Scale. I said, all oh, right, Drop Scale. He said, he does every rig I put in front of him. And Tony Kingdom, he fishes um, Dinton. He's not, yeah. he's no fool. Yeah, yeah. And, um, he said, every rig I've put in there, I've never caught it myself. He said, I've never caught it. It throws my rigs, it does my rigs, it does me. He said, he's he's the master, he's a rig master. So I said, oh, okay, drop scale. Right. Um, so anyway, hour and a half after he'd gone, rods come up, whop, <laughs> flat rodded, I'm playing this fish out. Bloody hell, it took me ages and uh, got it in. I could only just get it in the 42 inch net, it was that long. And uh, I said, don't. <laughs> he said, what, what? I said, got another one. He said, oh my God, have you? I said, yeah. He said, legend. I said, well, that thing you were about, did you say it had a big dip in its back? He said, get out. And, uh, yeah, it was drop scale. <laughs> Ooh, what did it go? 46 something. Um, so the, the run continued. And he said, do not catch the fully. There's a big fully in there, mid 30, 36 something. And he said, she's the queen. You've had drop scale to king. He yeah. said, you'll be public enemy number one in Devon and Cornwall if you catch the, um, if you catch the what should we call it, the, the fully. Yeah. And uh, boom, caught the fully as well, didn't I? <laughs> Never. <laughs> I did. I had five five thirties in that 40 out of there, that first trip. All on the, the Hermit's? On the, and on the Manila, Manila, yeah. Just oh. the Manila. Manila little Dumbo wafter and, uh, and just blood one pellet. And uh, yeah, so so the, 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 it just kept continuing, and everywhere I went, it was just thirties, forties, and and then I started doing the uh, you know the tuitions at Bluebell. What made you What made you go into the world of tuitions then? What, what was I, it? I, I did them before. Yeah. What when, What made you go back? Like any specific reason? Well, you because went... I didn't want to. I don't want to be working for someone now. Really, you know, okay. I don't want to be saying yes, no. Um, as you get older, mm. you get a little bit less. <sighs> You're easier. You're easier mouldable and, and and more more uh, abiding when you're younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, As you yeah. get older, and you've seen you've seen some of the things you've seen, and so I just wanted to have a bit of a free spirit to my life, you know. And uh, okay. so what's better than being outside and teaching carp fishing, seeing people's faces? Uh, we've had so many personal bests. One guy on my tuition's had forty two carp. He had eleven thirties uh, and a late record common. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it's, to see that happen, he still holds the record, like you know that you know that's a lot. Of, that was a lot of big fish, and uh, that's pretty special to be in, 40, yeah. in forty-eight yeah. hours, like you know, um, yeah. And he didn't want to learn a rig either. He didn't want to didn't want to learn the rigs. He just wanted to hold the fish. He said, <laughs> "That's it." <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's uh, he done he's done three tuitions with me now. <laughs> he just wants to go fishing. Yeah. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So that and when you've done that and you're out and about and and you end up become feral. You do. <laughs> you end up becoming feral, yeah. you know, sort of normal society, you know. And this lockdown was just, this last one, awful, awful bloody thing. Yeah. You know, sat on your own sort of thing. And, and uh, 
uh, sat in home when you want to be out in the fishing in the car and you know it's so cold you couldn't go outside and oh my god it's yeah so yeah, not so, the one no not the one so it's nice to drive down here and see life back to normal mm. you know, coming from bluebell and there was normal people there was a pub open and they all sat outside and yeah. i thought oh yeah great this is just you know so yeah so fishing was was i'll say she's my mistress and so yeah. why not why not can I just grab a cup of tea? Yeah, of course you can, mate. Sorry, I've, I've made you a cup of tea, mate, and you flip in, I haven't got a chance to drink it. You don't drink them cold, Steve. No, I don't drink them cold, but it's me back. <laughs> um, no, I don't like them cold, no. Well, there's just one thing I wanted to mention. Um, cool. Hopefully, I'll send you the picture. I'll find a better one. I forgot to say on the welly, on the welly thing, I've got the most adorable family anyway. All my nieces and nephews, got loads of them, but there's one, Ryan. Ryan Crouch, his name is. Dandy the angler, he's he's had he's had quite a few lessons from me over the years. He's got good, yeah, he's got good, yeah, uh, good shooters, so, and good genetics, so, mate. So I took him up to Welly, right, and I'd had literally out three hundred carp, literally all of them. I, the one I'd wanted was the dark one; it was called. And I said, "Do not get that one fish." I, I'm obviously doing helping him a bit, you know, quite a lot. <laughs> he's only twelve. He's, he's 12. He was 12, Oh, yeah. mate, yeah. So he, he's gone out of his uncle Steve, and we've put on some drum and bass on the way up. I had a oh, Bose mate. stereo system in his album. Don't corrupt him <laughs> at 12, Steve. He was corrupt already. <laughs> so um, so I've put the rods out, and um, we were having having a bit of food and whatever, and my rod's gone off, and uh, 36-pounder. And uh, it's gone through, it's gone to the left and taken out two of his rods. Oh. Or I think he only had two. But it's moved them. But thankfully, it came free, and I got it in, and then I had a 34, and it went through the other rod, so it must have dragged it. And he was all upset, and I said, look, I'll redo the rods, it was dark. I'll redo the rods, I know the silk, it was a silk plateau. And uh, with that, I said, look, I'll, you know, I'll get it sorted, and um, and then, boom, off his rod's gone, and it's been dragged, this rod's been dragged, and off it went. And uh, he's playing this fish, and it was apparent, it was a big and lot, you know, Um <laughs> And uh, so he's gone, Uncle Steve, I can't reel anymore. He's, he's only 12. Yeah. You know, and this fish is giving him hell. <laughs> she's she's like fighting like a stabbed rat. <laughs> and <laughs> so I've got in the water and I'm like, I said, right, reel. I'm, I'm hand lining this fish in the dark. I'm hand lining it in. So I said, reel, reel, reel. <laughs> and it, it, and I said, oh, shit here now. It never is. It was a dark one at 40, uh, 40 odd pounds. 40 odd pound. He's 12 years old. He's in the 40s club. Ryan, and, you're uh, a boy. What a what a moment that what was. What a boy. What a moment. He's gone on now to, you know, um he's gone on now to fish like the roach pit down he's on the syndicate down there, you know, and uh he had he had uh, that Jamie's and the three quarter Lynn and they're the two oldest carp in Hampshire and they are remarkable fish and very, very, very old. Mm. As old as me. And um he had them. He had them on at the same time. He caught them both at the same time. At the same time. And the thing was, I was down with him. I went down as a guest. I didn't fish. I just went with Ryan. I wanted to see Ryan and and yeah. and and you know and 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 he caught those two. So we, I've had some magic moments. And that one is special because that's my family. You know. Yeah, it's future, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So uh, yeah, sign him up. <laughs> sign him up. Sign him up. Board. He loves nasty. Hey, he loves nasty stuff. <laughs> Ryan, you're a legend, mate. That is <laughs> epic. Thank you, mate. Yeah, brilliant. He'll be so chuffed for that. He'll be he'll be smiling from ear to ear for a week. Here. Good, mate. That's how it should be, Ryan. Top man and top yeah. angling. Stick with this boy, and you'll do quite well. <laughs> um, before you go. Some yep. quick fire Nash questions, mate. Okay, mate. But I oh, need to say a massive thank you for that. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. It's been entertaining, informative. Good. Everything I thought it would be, Mr. Good. Renyard. Thank you. No, you're, it's um, my pleasure. And what I will say is, anybody wants to get in touch with you tuitions, because I didn't say before, is it just Instagram? I, I, at the moment, I'm just Instagram. Yeah, um, cool. So it's Steve underscore Renyard. Um, and, and they just, if you drop me a DM and I'll sort of sort out prices and, and, and availability. And uh, that's what I normally do. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quite busy, so yeah, it, get on it, it works. Um, yeah. It works. And uh, out of all the tuitions I've done, there's only two that have blanked. Only two. I One was because of Otters. <laughs> We're, we get the otters come in this bay, the fish cleared out. Yeah. They, they were gone. Yeah. And the other one, we could only get a swim where we could f- cast 30 yards in January. <laughs> yeah, that's so, asking a lot, isn't it? We could, we were in a, we were, had to go in a disabled swim. And that was, and those are the only two that have, have, have blanked. Yeah, there's yeah, two. Not a bad track record there, boy, is it? <laughs> Full stop. You're a legend, mate. Right. Let me grab the questions. Prepared as ever. UK 50 or foreign 70? UK 50, 100%. Bait boat or baiting pole? Baiting pole. Would you rather experience carp fishing 20 years ago 
20 years in the future? 20 years ago. Dawn or dusk? Hmm. Good one, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> Hermit rig or basic complicated rig? You've got to pick one. One to the rest of my days. Rest of your days. Hermit rig. Hermit and the wiffy. Professional angler or professional footballer? What would you rather be? Professional angler. I've had, a, I've had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lovely time. <laughs> um, never what? use a shelter again or never use a bed chair again? Oh. Um, never use a shelter again? What, what, a bivvy? Yeah. Or never use a bed chair again? Which Ooh. one would you get rid of? Oh, God. That's a weird one. Um, mm. <laughs> crazy question there, yeah, I said. Um, I, I think I'd have to have the bed chair. <laughs> I'd, yeah. have, I'd nice. have to, yeah. I'll sleep under the stars a lot anyway. Always torrentially raining when you're fishing or always 30 degrees and baking hot? Well, prefer cooler conditions, raining. Would you rather catch 10 20 pounders in a session or 140? 140. For the rest of your life, I think I know the answer to this, you can only listen to drum and bass or country and western. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of drum and bass. Oh, yes. Um, in a bucket or dig a hole? I, come from the old school, probably <laughs> in a hole. <laughs> um, hook, bait, colour choice, bright or match the hatch? Match the hatch. Camo or olive? One. Um, some camos. <laughs> Would you rather fish with for one day only Kevin Maddox or Rod Hutchinson? Who'd you pick? Oh, you nasty man. I oh, know I've done you. Yeah. That's the nasty one. I oh, know I've left it till the end as well. So you're evil. Can't beat me up. Um, you got to pick one. Well, because I fish with Kevin Maddox, I would I would I'll never fish with Rod. Oh, so a, it's got to be Rod. <laughs> he's a politician deep down there. Well done, boy. Um, last question date night with the missus. Or hit the lake on the end of a big pressure drop and a fresh southwesterly. Oh God, um, it's definitely the fishing. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> Go on, lad. <laughs> Steve, you've been absolutely brilliant, mate. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank Everybody you, who's buddy. watched and listened, I hope you did too. Please leave us a review. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all soon with another Nash Off the Hook podcast. And once again, mate, a massive thank you. Big love, mate. Thank you. <laughs>